What is going on, guys? It is Rexy here. Welcome, 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 welcome to the Randomizer Royale. I am joined by my lovely Twitch chat, as you can see here. Um, I am currently hosting a tournament um, in this video. I know if you're watching live on Twitch, I'm going to go over every single rule as we go along here. Um, but essentially, the gist of this tournament is it is a random pick uh, in a dual setting, of course, with a dual map. And uh, just no protection items. Um, and to go over that very quickly, protection items just mean the protection items themselves, including passives and stats on the items. Relics are fine. Health items are okay. As long as there is no protection stat on it, you're, you're solid. That's it. That's the only rules. Um, the prize pooling, how this is going to work, it is a 10,000 gem tournament. We have well over 100 entries right now, almost 200 I don't know how many people have checked in. I'm going to assume between 130 and 150. This may be my biggest tournament that I've ever hosted in terms of players. Um, yeah, it's 10,000 gems uh, in total of a prize pool. Okay, we have 131. 130 contestants. Uh, the roster is being made right now for the brackets. Um, I want. I asked hi res if I could has, uh, have the prize pool split up more evenly to like the 4th to 5th place, but they don't allow that for some reason. I don't know why. Uh... So it's, I think, what is the prize pooling? 5,000 gems for the first place winner. Um, second place is 3,500, and then 1,500 for third. Uh, and then obviously in the, uh, the loser's bracket, that's the person that gets third place. So yeah, it's gonna be pretty crazy. Um, I'm not gonna go over, there are, there is another, oops, there is another rule. And that is uh, for the semis to finals. And that is going to be, Basically, there are rerolls um, in the semifinals and finals. I'll go over that when we get there. Uh, but you guys don't have to worry about that. If you have any questions, be sure to just ask a mod. Ask in the IceGG Discord. That's where you can post if you've won, uh, won or not. If you have questions, uh, this is also um, organized by the lovely people at Iced.gg, run by a friend of mine who is awesome. Um, so be sure to check out the tournaments. They host tournaments weekly as well with lots of prize pools. So be sure to check them out as well. And thank, I would like to say thank you to them for hosting me as they usually do. Anyways, onward to the first game. Oh my God, finally. Okay. What is up, YouTube? We are finally starting our first game. Took forever with the spectator. Um, we have officially begun. I think they are currently paused. They're a little, a little bit of the ways in at the moment uh, because for some reason spectator has been buggy. But anyways, let's get to it, shall we? Hold on. We got Camelot versus Heimdall. There we go. Let's get this stuff ready. Does anyone remember the, the hotkey to turn off the, the walls and stuff? Yeah, this definitely does seem very favorable for our Heimdall here, starting out with Transcendence. Carapace Shard, which is actually pretty smart in this uh, in this setting, because it gives them that early game prot reduck. It technically gives them protections, but protections uh, protection items are the only ones that are not allowed, which I went out of my way to uh, explain. So, it's not against the rules by any means. Charging, using his 3 to get those auto-resets off into the knockup! Alt! Just for first blood, just like that, bada boom, bada bing. Charging secures the first blood with some nice auto resets on his three. Bada boom, bada bing. He's going to check red even though he has it, that's fine. I'm kidding. So the minis are still up, it looks like none of them have gotten the chest just yet. Does anyone remember the hotkey to get what it to get rid of walls? As we get into this. I'm also gonna make the chat box. Um, just a little bit smaller. I would like to get your guys' reactions in this. So, I'm just gonna put it like here, I'd say. There we go. <laughs> okay. So, charging's ults down. He's kind of in a bad position here, along with Camzot still having ults. Charging, not backing down, though, with the AoE auto attacks, but... Shells down, one more, into the Camzot's one if he has it. Should be another kill. Goes for the two. Knockup hits him just a little too late. And just like that, Camazox might be able to secure that red. 
before charging is able to make it back, but it looks like he's just going to opt to go back to the base. Charging missing over half a wave, which is pretty bad for him there. Camazots with the second tier Hydras that came in very clutch. Now charging has no... Uh, no... Shell for the next engagements. Red's about to spawn. Charging moving up here. It's the clear. Rotating over. Still a lead on the Heimdall side here. Should be able to secure this relatively easily. Qu We've had like quite a few pretty relatively even matchups. Charging swinging like an absolute truck. Once he gets that item finished as well, we'll check how much gold is in hand as well. Charging. Both players able to afford their next item. I would back off if I was Camus. I was considering ult has just been used. Beads are up, so charging has to be careful diving here, but crazy good poke. Just misses the two. Ooh, if he hit that with a third auto attack, that might have done it. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, boys. Charging is... On point with those auto attack penalty resets. Oh, getting him in range, but backing off for some reason. Camazot's ult might have come up by now. We look over at him. Still down for a little while, actually. Charging, choosing to back at that beat stick online as soon as possible. Not going into the Toxic Blade, which is quite surprising. Charging, finally picking up the... Charging. Why not? Maybe he's doing that because he doesn't want it to respawn and, you know, give the Camazots a chance to consistently get more farm than him. Or he just didn't see it. One of the two. Two level lead on charging. Doesn't have a second relic just yet. I would say this matchup is pretty heavily in favor of the Heim. Holy crap. Yeah, that is so much damage. Ooh, goes to three and almost body blocks himself in, turns for some reason, forcing the shell. Just at a range of the two, I don't know. Char both players to be a little careful here, I think Charging still has the advantage over the, the Camazots here. Going through, getting a timer on that blue, looping around with the one, still has the jump though! Oh, just at a range of that! Okay, he's fine, he's fine. Bit of a scary situation. Could have gone either way there. Camzot's the finished Hydras. Camzot's still having vision with the one. No, he doesn't. Okay, never mind. Doing something. <laughs> Camzot's looping around. Taking a look to see if he's anywhere around. Just going to finish that wave. Get the stacks that he can. Oh, his one's right here, though. And he's teleporting to it! Camzot's running for his life. That might be a bit of Phoenix pressure as well. That could have gone very south for the Camazots there. Yeah, that is some poke for charging here on this Phoenix. Choosing to go blink. Oh, I would have hit it a few more times. Maybe he's choosing to secure this blue. Okay, going over to minis instead. Doesn't want to risk it, I suppose. Camazots slowly farming up. It looks like charging's either going into a Kins, maybe an Azzy. Eggsy, perhaps. Assuming he has vision on that, but he's going to secure the red. This definitely seems like a favorable matchup for Haim. You can't really count Camazots out, because late game with ability-based, you know, Heart Seeker and that Sustain. You know, it could go either way. And without the auto attacks proccing anti-heal, as long as he maintains his distance and doesn't get hit. Ooh! Okay, there's the beats from Camazots. Gonna have to ult out, or he's dead here. Okay. Camazots is forced to back off yet again. Charging with the blink plays, being aggressive. Camazots still not owning a second relic just yet. Curious as to what he's going to get. Choosing not to get it yet. Yes, tournament just begun. Camazots reveling in thought. Both players, for some reason, really just not getting this. I think they kind of forgot this existed. It is quite a bit of gold in XP. Like, it's worth getting. If you get it off cooldown, you can, you know, snowball extremely quickly. Sorry, second round? Yep. All matches can start. I think I pressed you again, that's awkward. Okay. Amazon's around the corner, knowing full well Heim's rotating towards that, but with the vision on minions, Charging has a very clear knowledge of how far the Camazot is. 
with the burst. This full damage build, he's able to whittle that down extremely quickly. Having red buff on him, Kemzot's still about a fourth down. Checking to see his health. I don't know if he realizes that he has a full tier as he done. I'm as vision. Kemzot's jumping for joy. It gets slowed. The poke just isn't enough. No second relic on the camera. He's still forced to back off, charging, using the sustain of his Azzy and the lack of anti-healing Kamazots, just continuously apply, apply pressure from a distance. Which is his go-to in this matchup. Beads are down, so that is going to be... I don't think that kills charging. That killed? Okay, I was wrong. <laughs> I'm used to defense, what can I say? So just like that, it looks like this matchup is going to go to Heim. Almost turned around for the camera, but the ADCs are just a little too strong. Luckily, Charging didn't queue into a, a Freya or something currently. He's gonna win, what, the tournament? I have no idea. That's the beauty of a randomizer. A pretty normal match to start it off. Cam uh, charging, putting down his three so that he's able to back off, go back to retreat to his wave, and then backing off to collect farm. Go back to base with a 2400 gold in hand, which is essentially an entire new item. Yeah, Kamazots is just in a very awkward spot now. He's forced to get that beat stick as opposed to just like a pure damage item. Or even like a minor percentage pen item considering that the protections are starting to scale up a little bit. Uh, your base protections at least. I think that, you know, at least like one or two percentage items wouldn't be terrible. Maybe like a Heartseeker Hydras. Both players have a heart, uh, Hydras, which is good. Charging, choosing to pick out the blue, which is interesting. Maybe for the cooldowns to get 30%. I personally would have picked up the red. No, that's not true, Rosie. I'll go over that when we get there. Okay. Crazy damage. Kamazot's picking up the blink, but I think the level difference is just way too big at this point. He's going to be able to poke this extremely easily. Kamazot's probably looking to blink in, gets hit by an auto attack just as it happens, jumps the ult though! Ulting the wave. And getting back in. Oh, but the blink! Oh my god, that's still killed! Holy shit, I think that the Hydras came out. So he threw his three after he auto-attacked, but before the auto-attack hit him, he had thrown out the three. So the Hydras is what hit him. And still managed to kill him inside of the fountain. GG's, onward to the next game. Let's see the next matchup, shall we? Chernobog versus Cuckoo. What are these matchups? I was expecting like Bacchus's versus like freaking low tiers. Just like low tiers and stupid stuff. There we go. All right. <clears throat> and we are back. Onwards for our next game. We're just picking random ones because I want this tournament to be as random as possible. Next up, we have Krokito's game. And this game is a Chernobog versus Cuckoo Khan game. I was really expecting some more bonched matchups. I'll be completely real with you. I think, like, this could go very, very much in either person's favor. The no defense makes it definitely more of a wild card, I would say. Aiden's game was Fafnir versus Moose. Like, where are these matches coming from? The past three that I've seen have just been, like, iffy. Like, Kronos versus Huyi. What are these matches? What is the luck, dude? Ah. Well, oh, the man's peeking. Kuku Khan knows what's up. Alright. Put these down here so we get better vision. So, yeah, this could go in either person's favor because obviously magicals are extremely strong right now. Ooh, put a point into the dash with the root immediately popping off. Into the shell coming up from the Cuckoo. Doesn't want to absorb any of that damage before the waves connect. One more auto for the passive. Rikido put in a bad spot as his one's about to come up on the Kuku Khan. Three whips out. It's the entire way, pokes him with the one so that the minions actually go towards him. And it's going to force his clear to be a little awkward on Kirkito's side. Paradise with even more pressure, getting the slow off as well. Probably going to force out the med, as we see right here. Damn, it really looked in the favor of Kirkito, but Paradise turning it around. Already procced his horn, as well as Kirkito. Mages have just... Uh, mages are definitely the strongest class. Currently, in terms of duel right now. They can be bullies, but the no defense with the hunter? You never know, man. One missed ability, a couple auto attacks come swinging your way. Can be... Can be detrimental, that's for sure. Shaker Mixer. 
Yeah, it's with my gamer sups code Rexy. It's just a cup with a motor on the bottom that just kind of automatically does the thing. Blue bluff going to the Trinobog. I personally would have pressed it a little more as the ADC and just continuously poked them out a little bit. I know they're both lacking on mana, but I feel like with the ADC, you know, auto attacks just being whipped out every two seconds, it's like... I think it's relatively easy for uh, him to get pressure and just continuously hit him. So in Golden Hand, Rikido can't really afford anything. I'm going to assume that's an Azzy so he can, you know... Continuously sustain up on these waves. Just backing for some health, I presume. Coming straight back in and then just saving his money for the Azzy. Paradise in an awkward spot in terms of his back. Just because he's going to be a little late to this wave, missing some XP. They're going to die. Clearly doesn't give a fuck. Um, but now he has Thoth online. He only missed a minion or two, so it's not a huge deal. But you do have to count every single piece of experience in reality. Okay, silence. Missing anything could be could be rough. So yeah, Trinobog, just gonna clear out the mids here. Rotate back to the wave, we'll see if he goes the aggro way. Gonna take his time going around. Both already begun to stack. Trinobog not even stacking. Going into the Azzy start, which we see a lot in Conquest. I wouldn't say it's the best in Duel. I prefer Transcendence, personally. I know. Pretty controversial take, but... Gonna ult to stop his back for some reason. Make him miss out on a little bit of experience, but there is a large minion coming up. Which pretty much means that by the time he gets back, he's not gonna have missed any experience, but he's still gonna miss some gold. Cuckoo Cons just trying to pressure it as much as possible, get to that mid-game section where he can start to do so much damage. Poly pressure poking is gonna be huge on Mage's late game as well. My lord. So yeah, sustain now on the Chernobog side. It looks like Kukulkan maybe going into Chronos Pennant. Consistent cooldowns for poke. Chernobog going about the sustain route, which I understand. I think it's important. Yeah, Kukulkan's getting able to clear those waves very, very easily, especially when all of his builds going into that power department. I'm curious to what the, the general consensus of uh, the build... Um, formula is going to be. I kind of expect like double stacking and stuff. But the thing about it, like double stacking or going tablet and stuff like that might seem really good. And realistically, if you can get late game with those builds, it's going to be really strong. But if you get behind even remotely when you're double stacking like that and both of you can't build defense and the other person picks up a kins or something like that or is able to deal with all that HP, additional mana that you have, if you get behind, you could really screw yourself. So it's all about balance. It's whether or not, you know, you want to uh, double stack and pray for that late game, or just all in it. Go for the pure damage items as you go along. Just misses the root. Immune's in the wall there. Low on mana, having to med. Good sustain with the med as he combo. Stops autoing perfectly so he doesn't get hit by the three. Red has spawned, so now it's a fight for red buff. Kukulkan doing much better in the mana department. Both players could back for at least a tier two. Kuku consistently just trying to hit him with that one. He has more mana to spare compared to the Chernobog. Chernobog has to be very careful with trying to root him here, as he's only got about one or two of those in him. Opting to back immediately, so Cuckoo's going to be able to clear the wave, secure the red for free. Continuing his lead. Never mind, Chernobog! Kind of forgot how that ult worked, I'll be real with you. <laughs> Smart choice to ult, making, making sure that he can secure that red. Cuckoo Khan doesn't mind too much, he's able to just go back there and... Go straight to the blue. There's so many wild cards in this tournament, which is so exciting. Like, Trinobog's going into crit! I didn't really expect that, I'm gonna be real. I think because he's not building a bunch of additional HP, um, the Trinobog has decided that, you know, he's gonna go crit so that he can just rely on those instant autos to just kind of whittle him down, like, very, very quickly. Whereas the mages still have poly combined with maybe, like, high cooldown and high pressure and just consistently try and poke you and get away. But with the hunters, the crit could be the crit be, could be very hit or miss. And forward, nice. What was your matchup? Bastet mirror. Thank God, I'm not spectating that. Cuckoo checking mids. Channel mug already completed. Into the demon blade, I think is the name of this new one, which is essentially just wind blade, but it's changed up a little bit. 
Uku with the gank. Unfortunate miss. Chernobog ahead in XP now. Both players even in gold. But with the crit on the Chernobog side, it could be really good. Cuckoo doing a very good job of keeping his distance. Using his 3 with no CC kind of makes it very difficult to hit. Securing the 1, though, as he procs, so he knows he needs to heal right now. But he's choosing to play back as he can just back off and then reset for the next engagement. No need to completely commit to these fights. Just maintain his lead. Cuckoo can continuously poke with that Chronos Pendant. Looks like, is he going to try and sneak up early Bull Demon? Whoa, I did not see this coming. Damn, he's doing that very quickly. The Chronos Pendant coming in clutch for this. He doesn't even have to ult it. He has ult for secure, doesn't even need it. Choosing to back. Trinobog might get some Tower Poke. Looking to see if he's still around. Probably saw him back right there, so he's just going to try and bum rush this bad boy down. Doubling down in the crit, using his shard to get as many auto attacks off as he can. Cuckoo may have gotten the Bull Demon, but Trinobog still got over half the tower. So it's up to your opinion whether or not that was worth. But Cuckoo has been pressuring him out relatively well. Ooh, got rooted, but he's body blocked by the minions, so he's okay. He shoots out the Mighty Storm. Ooh, crazy good poke. Good juke by the Cherno. Doubling the opposite direction, but no dash. He's held in place. The cooldown is just too much. There we go. First blood goes to the Kukul Khan, making it absolutely worth that he got Bull Demon there. No second relic on the Chernobog. He wasn't able to use an Aegis or anything to save him there. Uh, Kukul Khan with the horn. Although, he has to back immediately because of the Chernobog ult. So, it was worth for the first blood, but he's not able to get that tower. So, it's not the worst thing in the world for Chernobog considering he's most likely... Going to hit level 13 off of this wave. There we go. So it's still relatively even, but First Blood does go to the Cuckoo. Going straight to the blue. So Chernobog also gets the red off of it. Maintaining an XP lead. Kind of looking out for the Cuckoo, but Cuckoo is over on his blue. It looks like he's also going straight into that Divine. Maintaining his distance with his 2. Just trying to auto that down. Get the stacks, which he's just finished. Just trying to smack him with that one and hitting him so hard. Smacking the one, backing off, smacking the one. That's... And then throwing a three every once in a while. He just heard this spot, so he might go for this. Trinobog might ult into this. It looks like he's going for it. Cuckoo's ult is seemingly up. Ooh, good root on the Cherno. Ooh, dodges it into the wall. Needs to secure a couple more autos. Med comes off the Cuckoo. He's autoing too much as he slowed down, so he can't do anything off of it. But, he should be able to get the... No, his minions are dying. I think he, he accounted for the minions walking up, and he would have been able to take towers, so he kind of disengaged there. Unfortunate. Oh, he got the root off! One more auto attack! He's in the wall! He's in an awkward spot. If he comes out, he's getting hit by the three, and then the tower! No! That's so unfortunate! Oh, man. Oh, he almost had him. Turner block was so close. So, so close. Deathbringer online. That's going to hit extremely hard. Cuckoo going for the mids, getting everything that he can. I would have went for the tower, personally, and making sure that I can get it. You know, get it as early as possible. Maybe he doesn't want to yet. He wants to just finish his items. Cuckoo doing a very good job at using his two to maintain his distance and just proc that one, get the slow, and running away. Probably going into a poly next so that he can more easily just smack him up about. No, disengage with the two. Chernobog has to be so careful with these roots. Because with this cooldown, him picking up blue buff, 30%, he's putting Chernobog in such an awkward position. And also, Med, with the lack of anti-heal on Chernobog's side, could also be iffy for him. So, the lead is clearly favoring the Cuckoo now with a 1,000 gold lead. Still getting close to that mid-game section, which I think that mid-game's probably going to favor the Cuckoo. But you never know, that Deathbringer, RNG is RNG. He's got a total of, I'd say, 75%, maybe, 70%, 50%, okay. <clears throat> I was thinking of Boomerang. Cuckoo just slithering on about in the jungle. Both players, no fucking idea where the other one is. <laughs> they were both, like, right near each other, I couldn't see. Cuckoo's still looking out for him, and they have finally spotted each other. Waiting to see what he does. Nose mids are down. Trinobog looks like he's going for that bull demon. Paradise. No, he's just 
Are there baiting towards it? I can't... I don't really know. Now Cuckoo has enough for that poly. Trying to block... Oh my god, that one hurts so bad. Oh my... Yeah, this is not looking good for the Trinobog now. No! Okay, he's good. Yeah, the, the poking pressure of Cuckoo with no defense is insane. I respect him for going the crit. I think that's his only, only chance here is to just get some good jukes, get late game, and slap him around with that crit. And just try him. Boom, 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 boom. Beat a Hebo with a Kumba. Oh my goodness. Trying to save his tower as best as he can. Already dashed. He's in an awkward spot, but the two is still up on Cuckoo. Cuckoo putting himself in a bit of a risky situation by doing that. There goes the two. Good sustain. Just narrowly dodges that. Wants to get as many autos in. See, these autos are hitting, like, really hard. He's gonna sustain up and most likely go for an ult as long as he jukes that. Okay, he's probably gonna ult. Yep, going straight in. Hit by a tower shot as well. Shell's still up on the Cuckoo. Pray for RNG! There we go! The return kill! He just needs a couple of crits. Although Cuckoo can poke him out super hard. Dude, he retaliates. If the Cuckoo messes up the positioning of the two one time. You know, you can see how bad it can be. He put himself in such an, a risky spot trying to auto him there. I think he's obviously trying to get the poly, poly shots off, but... You gotta be careful. Seven seconds down on the clock. Not going to invade the blue or anything. Low on mana doesn't want to risk it, that's fair. It looks like Cuckoo's going into a Cyclopean, I guess. Is my... Guess? Bloodforge as well. Doubling down on the lifesteal department for the Chernobog. Interesting. Picking up the blue. Yeah, this is so cool, man. It's so interesting to see. Like, it doesn't feel like... It's just so random. Get it? Because of the builds and what people are doing. The Randomizer Royale! <laughs> Trinobog still playing carefully. It could very easily go in either person's favor. Did he pick up a 500 pot? Yeah, Cuckoo picked up a 500 pot, making him 40% cooldown. Which I figure because his gold just went down and he didn't upgrade to the next ring. Using his two, getting the poly off, poly auto out, placing his three so he can't engage him. Both players very close to each other. Using the two, going for the poly shot again. Zoning him out very easily, using these corners to his advantage. Trinobog, well aware of this, just wants to go sustain off the wave and then re-engage him in the lane where there's more to work with. One poly, or one crit. Jeez, just hits like a truck. Waiting around the corner. Oh, baiting him into the ult. Poly shot. Tried to dash behind it, but he couldn't quite make it in time. Boom. What a return kill on the Kukulkan. Looks like he's going straight for that bull demon. Man, this is anyone's match, dude. That ult hit. He couldn't even egg his because he's in the middle of his dash. But it still gives Turnabog a chance. You know, he doesn't lose his Phoenix just yet. It's only Bull Demon. Turnabog still has ult. He's not too worried. You know, if he if he dies again, then you know, that could be bad. But he hasn't lost Phoenix yet, so it's not over by any means. We need to yet another crit at him. I would assume it's Boomerang. Knowing that he's on this, the three is just down, gets slapped by that one. Cuckoo backing off. I'm looking to finish whatever item he is. Choosing not to. I would assume he wants to make use of this bull demon. Didn't group them for the one, unfortunately. Wasting precious seconds of this. I think he should have committed to that back right there. Regardless, he was going to kill the wave. Cuckoo come back out. Coming back in with that Cyclopean, which is going to max him out on cooldown with that 500 pot. Because he doesn't need blue, and he's also picked up the red. This is I an ideal situation for the Cuckoo. Cherno still hasn't finished his next item. Cherno wanting to buy time. Using his Stim. Getting a couple autos in. No crits, it looks like, though. Which is unfortunate. Cuckoo just looking to pressure out that Phoenix. He's going to have minion debuff with Polly as well. That is a dead Phoenix, if I've ever seen one. Chernobog ults in. Maybe not. Into the ult, jukes it with a sidestep. Shell comes out with these autos that is hitting so hard. Boom! Just like that. Oh my goodness, this game is so back and forth. But, notoriously known as most mages are, especially Cuckoo, he's able to just place a three down and boom. 
Trinibog can't really get much off of that. Unfortunate enough for him. He can't really get the Phoenix. He doesn't have the DPS for it. And no protections whatsoever to kind of tank that. No Bull Demon to go for. Waiting around the corner, it seems, though. Looking to see what this Cuckoo's going to do. Both Relics down on the Cuckoo. Already used the two. He surely knows that. Being careful around the corner. Peeking very carefully. Not wanting to risk this whatsoever. Looks like he's going into a gem as well. Okay. So Trinibog's just chilling, doubling down on the lifesteal, looking for crits. That's kind of what he's praying for. Both relics up on the Cherno, though. No real reason to back just yet. As he has the crit items he needs. Cuckoo looking to just clear the waves, wait for his relics to come up. Nothing Trinibog can do, as Cuckoo's already done the Bull Demon, so... We're kind of just waiting now. Both players just chilling until they get their final items online. Waiting for relics. There's nothing really to fight over, not even buffs. Cuckoo doing a dance. Both players going into those uh, those newer items that came out last season. A Mirden as well as an Arundite. Warding up with that sick ward. What ward is this? Like a dodgy one? Red spawning relatively soon. No anti-heal out on Trinobog's side. Getting a timer on the bull demon. Red spawning very shortly though. Cuckoo looking out for the Cherno. Setting up a little early. That should still hit it though for one tick at least. Yep. But he walked out. Cherno looking to not contest this whatsoever. Cherno having enough to finish his um finish his next item. But 150 gold off the Cuckoo, though. I'm assuming they don't want to fight until that's up. Cuckoo did not realize that he backed. He could back and finish that Mirrodin. Trinobug might see him complete the back, though. Oh, he just misses him around the corner. He could have gotten Bull Demon. That is a shame. But he's got Vision all around here now. He's finished his Fail Knot. I don't know why I thought it was an Arendite. Cuckoo just did enough for the Mirrodin. Finishes that up. Trinobog probably looking to start this. Cuckoo rushing over immediately, but that crit is deleting the Bull Demon, and just like that, it is completed. Cuckoo waiting around the corner. Ooh, just misses the one. Gets hit by one crit. Two is already up. Places the three in place, so that is going to absolutely chunk Trinobog. Goes to the ult. It just narrowly misses, though. Huge poke with that. Oh, but his dash is still down. He's going to have to Aegis that three. Now he's playing on the defensive. Trinobog running for his life. Procs the med, but it looks like Cuckoo is just too fast. Is able to hit the one. Clears the wave, but he has no wave pushing up, so he's most likely just going to push with his poly. Well played by both sides here so far. I think that is going to be a dead Phoenix. Chernobog ult's most likely not going to be up before that Phoenix is able to be whittled down. Oh, poly, how I love you. How this is the dual meta. But no defense makes this a tiny bit risky. Makes it a tad bit risky. Eight seconds on the clock. One more auto should do it. There it is. Bada boom, bada bing. Men is able to go back to base. Both relics down on the Chernobog. Both relics up for Cuckoo. This is looking rough for the Chernobog late game. He's going to push up and clear that wave while he knows that Cuckoo is just backed. Trinobog, I'm going to go over towards this blue. No Aegis for this next fight, and also upgraded med on the Cuckoo. That's going to be some quick, quick, quick cooldowns, dude. Aegis are extremely strong. I think he needs to turn. Okay. Turn, juke that, and just fucking machine gun those auto attacks out. Otherwise, the Titan's going to be whittled down. That puts him in such an awkward spot. He's fine, though. He's able to get out. Oh, my goodness. Holly is missed, but the three is still down. Mages are just so strong with those Polly's. GG's well played by both players. That was a really fun one. I will see you the next game, guys. Bye-bye. That was a good one. Oh my god. What is this matchup? Okay. Next up, we've got Barty's game. We're a little bit further into this one.
I think I, I I think I know who who's gonna win. I have a bit of a uh, bit of an idea. <laughs> wow, this man got Ardio and Barty got fucking Vamana. Oh my god. All right, GG's. Onward to the next one. All right, folks, we are back with an interesting one. Um, <laughs> we got Ares versus Wukong, first show Zen versus Genos. Definitely not the matchup I was expecting. Both good players. And there we go. Ooh, very low. On first show side, going straight into the Bancrofts. Jono secured the red. Wukong versus Ares. I live for this shit, dude. I lock my door? Yes. I... My lock thing was... Like, my door is all messed up before. I guess so it wasn't locked. Still. Anyways. Let's get to it. Both players starting the Lifesteal um, Shard. We got a Shell. And an Aegis on the Wukong, as he already has his ult to, to deal with that, so he's not too worried. Swapping in two months. Hype train, let's go. How's it been, dude? Great, this tournament's been awesome. We've had some exciting matchups and some not so exciting matchups for some people. I've heard some funny stories. I don't see Ares winning this, but holy crap, wait, they're dead even on gold. What the hell? That's kind of weird. This is a tough one for Ares, I will say. The cripple's nice, of course, but it's still Ares. If Ares wins this, I will be blown away. And so impressed. But Furcho's a good player, man. Anything is possible. Furcho, enough to back and get a full tier Bancroft. We'll see if he goes into any aura items. As we do know, Ares passive. My cats. Or, hey. Magni. Shit. My cats have come to ruin my spectating, or my casting. But no defense, man! It could be anyone's game. It could be anyone's game. That's all I'm saying. Like, you get late game with Ares, dude. Like, you hit a couple chains. No, Milo. Hey. Milo, I'm trying to do a turn. Milo, hey. I will kick you guys out of here. Don't be a shit. Good poke by the Wukong. Has to retreat out. One more auto attack into an ult. Oh! Oh, he still gets the pull off with the juke! Oh, but the aggro's just a little too late! It's just not enough! So close! So close! He missed time the Aegis of everything! Okay, you need to go. Hey. Say goodbye. Come here. Say goodbye. Hey. Say bye. Hey. Oh. Sorry, they're little shits. <sighs> okay, Ares looking to go into a poly, but those chains, dude! The chains hurt! That was so, so close. It could have been any man's... Any man's kill there. Poly, next up for Ares. Good damage with the three. Trying to avoid that stun. Narrowly, oh, if those chains come up, it could be death for Genos. <laughs> He's dead and stop moving, yeah. The tower almost aggroed onto him, man. It was almost enough. No gambling, please, while, while I'm doing this. I'm trying to do a tournament here. So keep chat civil. Please and thank you. Not going for his own. Probably gonna lead it to where he wants to lead. Not getting that one for some reason. There's- you're still in here? Hey! I didn't know you were in here. I can go. No! Get out of here, both of you. I didn't know Maggie was still in here. Okay. There we go. Saving up for that poly. We'll see if he goes into Chronos Pennant to deal with some cooldown. Wukong going straight for the wave, building up those transcendent stacks. Although, no, there's two of them. There's two cats. I don't know where Magni was in here. I put Milo out. Milo's the one that meows a lot. Um, but yeah, man, like, 
Mage is really strong right now. If Ares gets some good chains, some poly cancels with his one and his three, like, you can't underestimate Guardian's late game, dude. Would you lose to an Afro as alert? No. Ooh, there goes the three. Ares already used the chains, though. Okay. There we go. Returning back to base. Geno's coming back up with almost enough for a full tier Hydra. Is that Polly's going to do a lot? No anti heal yet on the Wukong side. Ares is going to have good sustain here, but at the same time, you know, Ares doesn't have too many abilities to work with. I think maybe his strategy was to destroy this so that this... Okay, well, my idea of his strategy was he kills this one, so if Ares was to walk up and be like, oh, they're not here then, and then turn around. If that was the idea, then it failed, but that was, you know, what I presume it was. Ooh, poly shot. See, just like that. Boom, and he's not able to dash from that, too. Wait on round four? No, no. Wait on round five. Ooh, gets the ult out. Shell's still up for Ares. Ooh, gets the chain, trying to keep his distance, but it looks like Virtue is going to die. And Genos is going to be able to secure that kill. The aggro onto the minion is just a little too much. Getting as much farm as he can. Not going to go for Bull Demon just yet, though. Boom, boom, boom. Unfortunate for Ares. Wukong, like his decoy, still took aggro, so he's able to poke him out there. Ares tried to get him locked in behind the tower. So that he's able to just, you know, hold his position. And maybe Wukong dies to tower, but the built-in base protections are just a little much. Ares trying to get these last hits. A second relic onto the Wukong as well. If they can get late late game, I think Ares can do this. But it's very difficult against the Wukong, who can stun him out of his clear. You know, Ares sometimes has to use this one for it, getting those poly autos off. Looks like Wukong is going to snowball extremely quickly. Okay, both players not looking to fight just yet. Still got the horn on Ares, doubling down on the lifesteal. Taunting. Okay, I see what it is. I see how it is. Virtual staying just out of range. Crazy good poke with those Hydra's procs, dude. At least with Wukong. You know, like if he misses, he can still hit that. But Ares misses a chain. Oh my goodness, the DPS is just too much, dude. Ares is very similar to Thanatos, where it's like, you miss that one crucial ability, and it's just over. So yeah, he's probably going to go straight for Bull Demon here, or he's just going to get the blue buff so he can continue to farm up. Bada boom, bada bing, to securing all the farm he can get. He wants to maintain this lead, because the second they get to late game, it could be... It will be a lot more rough for him against a mage with no defense. All these shots. It is going to make things very difficult for him. Ares still low on gold, can't even finish a Kronos Pendant. No cooldown, so if he misses that one chain, dude... Oof. Grim, is is fortifying shell a protection item? Is my question to you. Is it a protection item? There's your answer. Okay, so the Sunder's out on the Ares. Ares desperately trying to get that Kronos Pendant online. Wukong going straight towards Bull Demon. Gonna get this down as soon as possible. His Hydra's procs are gonna come in handy. Virtual rotating a little late, but it's still only half. More Hydra's procs coming out. I don't know if Ares is going to make it. Very, very, very close. Genos 3 just coming up. Tries to secure it with the three-way. Winding over a chain or something, my guy. Boom. There goes the poly shot onto the decoy. Looking for the shell. Using his distance with the one, but it's still just not enough. This does not look like it's favorable enough for Ares. No cooldown. He can finish the Kronos. But at this point, I think it is just a little too late. I don't think there's much that the Ares can do. He's just gotten too far behind. 
Yeah. And Jano's going a little bit of sustain as well. And essentially what that does is force the Ares into it. Like, if he would have went... If he would have went into, like, a, a Soul Eater here, it would have been just as annoying uh, for the Ares. Because, like, what can he do? You know, he's going to have to be forced to build a Divine. He should be able to get out of here, though. Chains are hurting a little bit, but again, four level difference. It's not looking likely. There we go. Red buff going to the Wukong. It's just very much not looking favorable for the for the Ares here. I don't know what else to say. I feel bad for the Ares, but that's how it works, man. The randomizer royale works in mysterious ways. Sunder's just not doing enough. If it was even, I think you'd be okay, but the lead is just too strong right now. And here we go. This is it. Make or break. The immunity the immunity to his ultimate is also just so rough for the Ares. Going in for the poly shot, immediately ulting for the CC immunity, forcing out his ult, running straight away. Sunder still up, misses the chain, but even the minions too strong. Okay, GG's. Well played by both players. Luck of the draw right there, unfortunately. Anyways, see you next time, or see you in the next one, guys. Okay, and we got another one, another randomized matchup: Hydrogen versus Pitbull. Another Vamana game. Being whipped out into shape here. Vamana versus Kleena. Hmm. I have the strangest feeling like this is going to be relatively impossible for Kleena. But with no defense. I mean, Vamana's passive doesn't work very well in this particular setting. If you get like a Heart Seeker, bunch of sustain on Kleena, it's not like Vamana's going to be backdooring you the entire game. It's not like he can just tank Phoenix. You know? Why do the textures like go away? That's weird. And they add rocks. That's odd. It's tough to say. It could be any man's game. Both like ability based relative characters. Uh, Vamana more so, like auto attack based, but they both can get away with going ability based and just smacking them really hard with like a, a, a heart seeker. You know, get that crusher going. Better clear, I'd say, on the cleanest part. Not in the early game sections just yet. She did use her abilities as well. Tanking the archers, putting herself in a bit of a dangerous spot. Having to dash towards the minions. Blink comes out of hydrogen already. Silencing into the two for the slow, or for the slow immunity. Okay, often just immediately get the blue. Okay. So blue buff is secured. Both players going into Transcendence. Hydrogen has already used his shard as well. It seems as though most people are heavily favoring the Vamana in this matchup in terms of the channel predictions that we've got going now. A Twitch.tv slash Rexy, of course. This is where this is being streamed live. I stream every single day, at least for February. We're on day 18 of streaming in a row. It's been so much fun. You guys have been lovely. We're almost... We're only... We're less than 100 subs away from 2,500. Our end of the our end goal, by the way, Twitch or YouTube, our end goal was uh, 1,000 by the end of the month, and we're at 2,500. <laughs> Crazy. Hydrogen tried to bait him forward there since Kleena wasn't level 5 yet. Trying to bait him forward, and he had just enough mana to ult, so he wasn't too worried. Lots of mana on the Kleena here. Probably just going to ult this wave. Into the clear it, so Vamana's gonna lose a bit of gold, bit of experience, maybe one or two minions. Maybe not even, he's getting back very quickly. Mids go to the cleanup as well. And there we go. Transcendent just a little ways away for each player here. We'll go with Golden Hand. Vamana clearing the wave and then backing, just gonna wait for that Transcendence. Kleena is gonna have to wait for one more wave. So the stacks need to be started off on... Vamana first, who also started a Chalice, though, so Vamana has a very clear advantage in this situation. 
He's got... He's already healing. He's already got sustain with the Chalice combined with, you know, the stacks of Transcendence. If I was cleanup, I want to clear this and immediately get out. I'm not fighting that in a million years. Wait, if you auto-attack, was he still invisible to the Vimana there? Yeah, this... Oh, just out of range. Uh, choosing to turn for some reason there. Hydrogen securing the first blood. Just like that. Good ult, but that's just not enough. I don't think he should have turned and tried to one there. Vimana has CC immunity in his ult, so he's able to easily just slap that down and boom. He's not even silenced. He can just throw it out there. A lot of interesting matchups, I will say. Bit of tower poke for Hydrogen. Looking for those little chests. Oh, oh, <clears throat> good job. I was about to say, no one picks up the fucking chests! So there we go. Maintaining the lead. Curious to what Vaman is going to go next. Because he can't go his typical a bunch of defense items and still do a boatload of damage that everyone fucking hates, of course. Hey, Zub. Zubub. Zub. Zubaloo. We're buff spawning soon. I am not sure what Vamana is building just yet. Toxic Blade, maybe, in case Kalina decides to go some sustain. Mana looking over to red, not immediately seeing that he's on it. Kalina trying to secure it in time, but it looks like the two is gonna steal it. Just didn't have enough bursts. Bada boom, bada bing, red goes over to the cleanup. Blinking, knowing that his dash is down, needs to get into the wall, but he might put it out of range! Okay, he just makes it. Hydrogen. Waiting around each side, putting Kalina in an awkward spot, but his dash should be up. Dashing towards him, though. Ooh, reading him, and is able to just secure himself a second kill. Damn. Of course I love you. Good reads by the Vamana. It looks like the clean is going straight into a beat stick, would be my guess. The lifesteal of the Vamana ult. He might need a Sunder too, I'd say Shell Sunder to deal with those shields that come up. Very, very heavy snowball coming out of the Vamana in this situation. But in an awkward spot, but he still has ult. The clean is not too worried. Insta clearing the wave, going for the one just at a range, not enough to silence the dash. It might be able to pressure out his blue, though. Vamana could contest this and just ult if he really wanted to, but I still think that clean is going to out-secure him. Not as much of a lead that he would have hoped for. Coming out for Vamana as, you know, clean is able to get two buffs, or sorry, uh, one buff as opposed to Vamana getting all of them. Gonna go in for mids. Vamana knowing that she's around because the blue is just completed looping around. Kalina did see him though. Going into the walls, getting more vision. Jumping up behind the tower and he's fine. And just like that, Kalina's fine. Transcendence fully stacked on the Vamana though. Toxic Blade coming in as well. It seems as though he wants that movement speed combined with... A bit of health, staying in range, tanking it so that the Vamana can't just come in and fuck his shit up. Ooh, very low, though. Hydrogen knows he can't dive it, though. The lack of protections, although extra health is nice. Okay, that ult should stay there long enough to clear that wave. Hydrogen kind of looking for it, but he knows he can't risk it. It's not worth the risk based on the lead that he's made, especially with the fact that... You don't get any bonuses for First Blood Gold, which was removed, which was very smart and good on high res. But, Revenge Gold is still implemented, so if he would have been killed once there, the entire lead would have been pointingless. Pointingless. Pointless. So that is something high res definitely needs to change for duel. Because it doesn't make sense that you can be up and you can be punished for winning, essentially. That's one annoying thing about duel. Uh, yes, hold semis. No one starts semis. Yeah, I was just thinking about that, Captain. Like, if like I could never cast for high res because I would swear too much. Kleena tries to fuck up Vamana, but Kleena dashes out, forcing out Vamana's fucking stupid ultimate. Kleena going to clear the wave immediately. No sustain on the Kleena yet. Not looking like that's the build she's going for. <laughs> Holy fuck! <laughs> just every time something happens, I'm gonna come. <laughs> Yeah, these tournaments are a lot of fun. I love hosting them. And thank you guys for watching. If you do enjoy on YouTube, make sure to like the video and consider subscribing. I do these tournaments a couple times a year. I like to just have fun with it. 
Ira supplies the gems, and I just kind of run around and... Iced hosts the tournaments for me. As of late, I used to do them on my own, but having Iced is very, very, very convenient. Ulting all these ways, but Mana Ult's still down, so he can't particularly dive too hard. He could get a second Relic. Hydrogen could go immediately for that Boldoon if he wanted to. But, looking to secure the blue and just maintain that lead. Beat Stick completed on the cleanup. Mana also deciding to go crit as well, something we're seeing quite a bit in this tournament. Clean is definitely going to have to go the route of like Heartseeker, maybe a Hydra's, and just hitting him and getting out. Max cooldown, proccing the, proc the Heartseeker, hitting him with the Hydra's, and getting the fuck out of there. Because if Mana sticks to him, if Mana gets a hastened online, it could be bad. Like, look, Clean is already doing good damage. Shell coming out. Forcing Hydrogen to use his ult as well, as you can see, like, it's still... The damage numbers are coming out. Ooh, blinks at a good time, but the silence comes out into the three, and a revenge kill goes to the Kalina. There it, oh, there it goes, man, the Kalina cleanup. Throwing that minion, she doesn't give a fuck. There we go, a return kill. Which, as you can see, completely makes her catch up, even though Vaman has been focusing on making sure he's ahead. Isn't that cool, High res He's literally ahead now. Pfft. Fucking ridiculous. That's what I told you. That needs to be removed. Because, <laughs> like, the reason it needs to be removed is just because there's already so much you're going to get off of killing people, usually. The dual map's so small. Odds are, look at all this farm. You've got two XP things, three buffs. If you get one convenient kill, you can sweep the whole map before they respawn, you know? Kalina should definitely... Ch Someone needs to go over there and collect all that farm. But that's a nice revenge kill for the Kalina going into second tier Hydras, which is what I said. Boomerang as well on the Vamana, looking to just try and stick to the Kalina as much as possible. Which is his plan. I'm assuming he goes hastened, because if he gets like whittled down from a distance, it's going to be difficult for him to close that gap and get the damage he needs off. But with the crit as well as the Toxic Blade. Even though Kalina doesn't have any healing, it doesn't matter. He mainly wants it for the stats, the Power Reduct, or sorry, the Attack Speed Reduct. I guess it's fine, I forgot that they removed the power. But, you know, it just secures the fact that he's not gonna get Life Steal. It also gives them extra mobility, lots of Attack Speed, Health as well. Mana able to just whittle down his health. But, ooh, hits him as he dashes. Unfortunately, no crit. Hydrogen still looking to play off of this. If his two comes up in time, goes to the three, just out of range. Oh, wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> the mother... <laughs> Did he just fucking walk back into the range? <laughs> he got out. <laughs> he was completely fine. What? <laughs> he walked back in range of a two? Wait, why? <laughs> oh, I, I, I don't know. He went for something there. <laughs> Kalina was fine there, all he had to do was walk away. Waiting to drop that so that he can pick it up after his blue buff runs out on the way back. Can't you just click on them? I mean, I'd prefer not to, I'd like to see what both players are doing. If someone's running away from the other player, I can't really see what's going on. I prefer this camera style. I don't know, fucking doubters man, you never know. Kalina could turn this. Lamana picking up the red as well, level 16 to 15, getting onward to the late game stages, which might be in favor of Lamana. Closing the gap with his blink is going to be huge here. Still choosing to hold on to his wing shard as opposed to getting another relic. Just for the mobility and additional attack speed, doesn't even think he needs another relic. Finally rotating over towards mid, someone gets this fucking XP. Both players just getting their XP camps and backing off. Vamana probably waiting until he gets that Deathbringer online to really engage here. That's what I would do for sure. Doesn't want to fight. That's, yeah, exactly it. Kalina ulting the wave. Look at how much that initial hit does. That is nuts. Kalina might be able to get the tower here. And Vamana knows that, so he's just getting him off of it, and then he's going to re disengage. Blue buff spawning just now. If Kalina would have went into the wall, he could have secured that. I don't think he knows that that is up yet, though. It doesn't have a timer. Deathbringer is complete on Vamana's side. If Vamana gets close to this Kalina, 
It's not going to be good. What is he building next item? Is that a Crusher, maybe? I would have opted to go into a Heartseeker next, personally. He might be even going Titan's Bane or something to deal with the base protections of a mana. Oh, Jotun's up. Pfft, duh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Never mind, sorry. So used to Breastplate, man. I'm so used to everyone going Breastplate. Legend waiting around the corner, goes to the blink, into the crits! Huge damage, Shell comes out! But the crits are too much! Kleena was not ready for that, she wants to dash up into the wave. That's gonna be tower. Hydrogen could just go, like, let the minions kill it. Go straight to Boldium if you wanted to right now. Thank you, Stealth! Appreciate the 55 months. Big tournament Ws. Or he's just gonna get the Phoenix, it seems. Okay. Phoenix going straight to Hydrogen. I'm surprised Hydrogen didn't go, didn't go into a Golden Blade to start. I guess the pure ability power is... Really good for that heavy burst. As we saw under the Phoenix line when he just slapped him with a two. No use of the shell coming, or uh, the Sunder coming out on the Kleena just yet. Maybe it actually wasn't worth to get Sunder. Just because these engagements are so short lived and just so burst heavy. That like, most of the time when you use that Sunder, it's like he's continuously getting hit by the Phoenix or something. And you're trying to whittle down those shields. But with this, it's, he doesn't really even have time to use it, unless he knows that he can full commit. So there hasn't even been one instance where he's able to use it just yet. I would have probably built the same thing too, is the worst part. I think Horrific would have been really good, would be really good on the Vamana right here. I think he should get it. That's what I was, that's also what I was thinking, yes. Mid's going over, level 20 secured for the Vamana. Could back for full tier Hydras, but he sees Kleena moved up a little bit. Not even gonna let her secure the, or get the blue for herself. Backing for that Hydras too. So three levels up on the Vamana. What's going on here? Oh, right. That's how that works. I forgot. It doesn't immediately proc. <laughs> I forgot you could do that. I have a 10th Master Cleta. I forgot about that. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, at this point, now the level difference is... Uh, not going to be good for the Vimana. He needs to try and pressure it out right now because Kleena's slowly going to catch up off of all these waves. A lot of the minions are just going to start dying uh, to the fire minions and he's going to be losing XP and gold. Not that he needs XP, but it's just going to give Kleena a chance to catch up, right? Just slowly giving her XP, although he's getting ahead in gold and, you know, he's getting every ounce of farm, Kleena's still soaking up that experience. Nice, Aiden. Hydrogen needs to make action right now, because this might be level 19. Could look to blink in. Ooh, dashes awkwardly in place and hits the Phoenix. Kleena getting closer to level 19. Bit of an awkward spot for, for the Vamana here. Going to blink with the holy shit! Oh my god! The auto cancels, never fucking mind, not awkward at all! Man just exploded! He used his ability and then blinked in, got the Hydras with a Deathbringer prot, auto cancel into another ability, and just insta killed them. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy crap! GG's. Well played by both players. Kleena just couldn't get that late game online to burst him with the distant damage. Onward to the next game, boys. What? B Barty, no! Barty got freaking Sylvanas? Barty got Sylvanas versus. I need to see this one, dude. I gotta watch this one. Barty against an Anubis. With no defense allowed. Anubis with a knockup immunity. Two abilities that have knockup immunity. This is tough. Sylvanas is insane, yes. But you gotta think about it. He doesn't have defense against an Anubis. And the sustain on Anubis, all he can get is divine. Maybe a Toxic, of course. But this is going to be a very, very interesting one. Everyone, get your predictions in. Who do you think is going to win? We got Lardy B, a notoriously god-tier dueler, versus the Anubis, Mr. Max Strategy. Clearly, he's got some strategies up his sleeve. Starting off with the, uh, the Meditation, doubling down on the Lifesteal. Barty... Knowing that he's not going to be able to outclear him, starting up the blue immediately. I respect that. Nubis starting up into Bancroft's very, 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 you know, obvious. 
Barty looking to go into a stacking type build. He might whip out the Radal strategy. But we'll see how this goes. How are the predictions looking? We got 130,000 on the Sylvanas. People are doubling down for Barty to win this. The believers for Barty, dude. The Sylvanas. We gotta believe in him, boys. Uh-oh. Looks like he's fine just now. S gets that Anubis ult out. Anubis, after one more wave, should have enough for a full tier Bancroft as well. Good pull! Forces the mid, beads out, and the tower's still on him! Barty gets first blood! Oh my god! Let's go! He oh my god, what a first blood! Oh, the Anubis got cocky, moved up just a little too much. He underestimated the Birdster with the Sylvanas pull for the first blood. Bees, so he could just get out of range of his one. And his one secured him in the tower for just too many shots. Damn, what a start to this game. Doubters beware, man. Sylvanas might have this in the bag. Anubis choosing to not go and finish that Bancroft. Maybe he's just not looking to fight here, looking to reset. Knows that mids are up, he just checked them. Barty just started stacking. Beads are down, he's not going to be looking to fight for a little while. He also had to use his horn. But, Barty does know that the Anubis does not have Bancrofts online. And, Sylvanas ult is up. So, oh my god, he timed it properly. Waiting for the knock immunity. Waiting him for he, to use his one. Oh, one more auto attack. Barty playing it perfectly. Ulting at the perfect time. Pulling in the second he tries to use that one. Well played by Barty. Anubis got caught out without the Bancrofts. And just like that, second kill goes to Sylvanas. Nice. <laughs> non believers are scared. Well played. So what is Barty going to go next? Is he stacking? It looks like he's going straight into a Divine. I respect that. Looks like the Nubus is going around. Checking to see that blue. Seeing what's up. Barty just patiently stacking. Waiting for his beads to come up. Not going to risk that, I presume. Anubis really admiring the bushes. What you thinking about? He's like moving. Hey. Hey, hey. Are you okay? What are you doing? Oh, oh, he's back. Oh, did you DC? He did. He DC. Okay. That makes sense. The respect on Barty to not push up, even though the person with the much superior god happened to DC. So respect. Let's see just how long. Hopefully this doesn't take too long. I'm trying to speed it up. But it doesn't look like I can. Hopefully he returns here relatively soon. Whatever he wants to see. It's paused. He's gonna he's gonna come back. I think he's is he back right now? Dude, bummer there, pause for a while. Oof. Okay, well. We'll be right back. Okay, I guess we just wait. <laughs> ah! We are right back! <laughs> We're okay. Remember, no spoilers. If you know who wins, if you spoil it, you will be immediately permanently banned. Get the fuck out of my chat. Let people have fun and enjoy the matchup. This is a tournament for a reason. There's no need to ruin it for everyone else. Ooh. Nice wrap by the Anubis. Good sustain by the Sylvanas. Lots of health as a Guardian as well, which is going to be a problem with the Anubis, of course. No, 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 Banana. You didn't spoil the name. I just... I, uh, it's just warning people in general. Sylvanas is kind of fucking thick, so he is able to be seen by the Anubis relatively easily. Anubis with 1,700 gold in his hand. But, the amount of sustain Anubis doesn't have to worry, he's probably just looking to secure that red. 
Already, I'm assuming, knowing that he can't do much about it, even with his beads, which he's actually upgraded to tier 2, which is very smart. He wants that beads up as much as possible. Dragging the minions over to his blue, Anubis already knows that the blue is up. Very smart, using the shard to secure the buff as well as the minions, autoing them super, super, super quickly. Well done by Barty. Anubis still has tons of pressure, relatively even. Even with a two-kill lead, Anubis still has the pressure to get multiple buffs. Oh, he doesn't have too much to worry about, but Anubis is low on mana. Anubis is not playing this as carefully as he should. I think he's underestimated Sylvanas. Sylvanas... Okay, um... Savannah's so still, like, full health, lots of mana. I mean, after the wave's cleared, he's gonna go for it. Knock up immunity by the Anubis, which is well done, but the sustain is still a lot for Savannah's to handle. Med coming out, putting Barty in an awkward spot! Oh, Anubis just misses enough ticks. Baited him forward with the med, which is very smart, but Barty auto-attacked by accident, and the auto-attack slow penalty kept him in range for two ticks of the Anubis 3, which is enough to kill him, missing over... Half of a wave, which is very, very bad for the Sylvanas, and then also steals his beads off of him as well. An unfortunate situation for Sylvanas. Very well played by the Anubis, baiting him forward, using that med to make him think that he was, you know, completely out of position. But then it caught Barty off guard too hard. And just like that, the kill, revenge kill goes to Anubis. Non-doubters are rising up. Or doubt is our, sorry. Anubis going over towards mids, just getting all the farm that he can. Oh, is Anubis going into a gem? Don't do it, bro. Let's don't do that. No. He's just Sylvanas, dude. Don't do it. Sylvanas just lurking around, checking for Anubis. No anti-heal. Oh, he does have Divine. Ooh, just stops him in the middle of the pull. This is gonna be so interesting late game. I believe in Barty, but Anubis is Anubis, dude. This is tough. This is some bad- this is some tough luck for Barty. Is Barty streaming this, by the way? Must returns to base for another tier 1. I'm assuming... Ooh, a Mirrodin, maybe? Looks like he's going all in with those ultimates. I'm curious what he's gonna get as a second relic as well. Not missing the wave. Red buff spawning relatively soon. Anubis should be back in time. Going into a Warlocks. Okay. So Anubis is going through the strategy of just a lot of health that Sylvanas has to deal with. So he's either gonna have to get a Reaver. You know, to deal with that. Anubis walking out very, very shortly. He was trying to bait him out so we can try and go for a wrap. Oh, just missed times it by a slight margin. No second relic on the Anubis as well. Looks like he wants to see what Sylvanas is going to get. Pushing towards his blue. Already's in such an awkward position now. That one return kill just was terrible for him. It put him in just such an awkward spot. But he's able to secure the blue, which is good. Anubis knows this. He's going to guard this. Still got the XP from the tower over there as the Sylvanas is still in range, which is nice. Still has beads to his name. I'm assuming Barty is going to go into Aegis next because that kind of seems necessary in this matchup. Just watching me watch him. Oh my god, the Deception. Inception. So the Warlocks has started. Thoth has finished stacking. Anubis is slowly going to get stronger with that health. It's going to put the Sylvanas in a pretty awkward position because until he gets until he gets something to deal with all that HP Anubis is slowly just gonna keep building it and building it and building it Sylvanas has a lot of built-in HP you know being a guardian and all which is nice and you know it's one of the counters to Anubis in like a very small sense like not a realistic counter but abilities only deal X amount of damage the more health that you have it's still the same amount of damage you just got more health to deal with you know Looking for that rat. Beads are still up into the bling, but he doesn't use his beads because he was late on it. Divine still ready to go. Walking at a range of the ult just, or the one just misses the pull. Very, very, very 
strong willpower on Barty not to use his beads in that situation, but he could be in an awkward spot! He isn't able to survive, holding his beads just a little, little, little too long. So unfortunate. Lots of stacks for the Warlocks on the Anubis. Sylvanas has to pray to get late game in this situation now. Three levels down. He has a lot to work towards. Mirrodin is going to be completed before he walks up as he spawns right now. He purchased it as he walks. Phoenix already down to half. Going to look to wrap him and just continuously poke this out, I presume. Just misses it. Goes for the wrap. Hits it. Good poke. And ult is up again. They're still up. There we go. That's such a huge return kill for the Sylvanas. Oh my goodness. I forgot he did an ult in the last engagement. That Mirrodin literally came in perfect clutch. Like, the most perfect timing for him to just finish that item and it to win him that fight. Like, what the hell? Dude, Destiny is on Barty's side. Well, you know what? I'm gonna say, you know, he maybe threw him a crumb. Because this matchup's kind of fucking rough. <laughs> but, you know, Destiny's still there, you know? Sometimes the protagonist has to go through a couple battles. You know, the underdog situation here. Most people are believing in the Sylvanas. It seems as though they're rooting for the, the low, low win rate or low win chance matchup. Sylvanas' thick thighs are just a little too much. Anubis trying to get closer so that if he does ult, which I think is it is up already. So yeah, Barty was forced to beads there. Unfortunately, uh, Sylvanas' thick cheeks uh, alerted him with a clap with every step, and he was able to secure the wrap there. So now Barty needs to play it back a little bit, looking like he's going to go into a poly. Barty just has to, he knows he needs the all in this, in these engagements, and just hope that he can burst him down. That's his best case scenario. Which is much easier said than done. Blink coming up right now, probably trying to wait for that. Misses the wrap, good too. Running away with enough anti-heal. Go oh, there we go! Just enough to kill him. Maintaining his distance very well, juking back and forth. I was worried that the auto attacks wouldn't have been enough to do it, but that was all he needed. I don't think that... Uh, wait, Spear was finished with an engagement. Jesus. Very back and forth game here, man. Barty playing it so carefully. Still no second relic on the Anubis either. Looking to keep this... Uh, keep the horn. Now Polly is online, though. Polly's online. That's a lot of bursts that the Anubis has to look out for. And Beats coming up in 60. Anubis ult down. By the time that they engage once again, those Beats are going to be up. And if the Anubis doesn't time his one properly, or ult is ult, or buy a second fucking relic for God's sakes, you know? It could be bad. Anubis determined. Man wants some vengeance. Plots of life steal 50 stacks on that Warlock, so the percentage pen isn't available. Just yet a level lead on the Sylvanas as well, which is a bit of a turn. Nearly the same gold, unfortunately. Anubis, thinking that he's not looking, but Anubis ult might still be down. It's going to be a close situation. Beat's still down for 30, though. He gets hit by the wrap. Times it perfectly. Timed it perfectly. He knew that he was going to try and wrap him right there, so he just slaps out the ult. That, combined with Mirden, the extra DPS that he gets, boom. Just slams him down. If Anubis gets caught out by that ult, like I said, if motherfucker would have bought Aegis a little earlier, things would have been different. <laughs> he just needs to all in. Oh, poly shot. <laughs> he just needs to all in it, dude. Anubis is aware of that, I, I presume. Obstrad coming out for his percentage pen as the protections continue to scale up the base protections It does seem pretty awesome to see that most people are understanding the rules and no one's really pulling defense or anything. So thank god Okay, so beads are up blink coming up for the next engagement as well For the sylvanas just peeking around the corner checking around that bull demon both relics up for both players here sylvanas Pressuring up the red, has a ward, knows exactly where the Anubis is. <laughs> Good juke by the Anubis. You can see him around the corner, even though he had a ward that just wasn't enough. Looking for the rat, but it looks like uh, the Anubis is just going to go straight for the red. Three is down. Ooh, blinking in the moment that he had used that. And then the polish shot, that's over. 
blinking in immediately after that. He was distracted and went to pick up the red buff, securing his ultimate. Just like that. He needs to play this so carefully. Like, like he needs to engage at such perfect times. Because if he mistimed that, right? If he mistimed that the Anubis was ready, and he Aegis, or he wrapped him in time. Like, he needs to find the moment where he's distracted, where he isn't going to be predicted, uh, predictable, so that, you know, the Anubis can use his one to knock up a unit, ults to, you know, there's so many things that the Anubis can do to counter this. So the Sylvanas just has to play this so, like, sneakily. No buff even, either. Level 20 on the board for the Sylvanas. Anubis only two levels behind, which doesn't really matter for mages. Let's be real. Rod completed on the Anubis as well. 2.2k gold after this buff. On the Sylvanas. Let's see what he's going to go for his final item. I'm going to assume a Rod, maybe. And he's probably not going to want to fight until the Rod is complete. Or whatever. Oh, he went into a spear. Okay, so he's not going off shard. Both play. I keep forgetting that there's another item in that tree now. I was saying, I feel like off shard is a little too much pen. Like I said, two items, I think, with percentage pen. Like 10% is more than enough, in my opinion, for no protections in this tournament. So yeah, it looks like that's a rod. He's going to want to wait till the rod is uh, finished building, would be my guess. Because by then, he'll have beads up. As well as Blink, he knows that this Anubis, regardless, is going to get level 20. There's not much stopping that, and even if he isn't level 20, it's not the hugest difference in the world. Still Anubis, you know. Motherfucker doesn't need, you know, <sighs> that much to be able to 100 to 0, yeah. One level isn't going to be that different. Is he going into a Gaia here? I wonder. Okay, clearing the wave. Has vision. Anubis oddly paranoid about the back door considering there's no defense. Let alone no physical protection either. So yeah, I think my hypothesis was correct. It looks as though Barty is just waiting for uh, his rod to be finished. Knowing that he has pressure right now. They're both finishing their items. He just wants to be full build, perhaps. He's kind of looking at it. Ooh, a good reaction by the Anubis, but Jesus! That might be it. Oh my god, that's still enough? Is that game? Is that it? Holy shit, did you see that damage? The ult with the poly one? Oh my god! Anubis even reacted appropriately, but it just wasn't enough. Like... As long as, it, at max range, if he blinks that, if he blinks it in time, then he's just screwed, dude. If he's able to, is that game, that's game. Right? I, okay, I'm getting kind of nervous. Okay, that is game. Alright, GG's to the Sylvanas! He's able to juke out the two, slap him with the ult, even with proper reaction time. It's just not enough. It's not, it's not enough. The Bards, their wins. Sylvanas versus Anubis. GG's well played to both players. On with the next one. Okay, so we are back. We're watching Radel's game. Radel got Artemis versus a Guan Yu, which is going to be an interesting one. We didn't, uh, we weren't here to watch the first blood. Spectators just being a little buggy today, unfortunately. <coughs> Definitely not a matchup I was expecting, though. We're going to be spectating a Bardi and Aiden's match after this. That's going to be definitely a big one. We'll go with Golden Hand here. Boom, bada, bing. Bloodforge start? From Artemis? What is he starting? Okay, Devils. He waited a long time to get the Devils. Focusing on the sustain, it seems. This is going to be a bit of a slow one. Oh, wait, that's Mantos. Oh, this is a big match. Oh my god, I didn't realize that was Mantos. Mantos is a very good EU player. Mantos is the one that won. Or was it him or... Was it Mantos versus Maestro in the Guardian tournament? I know they both made it super far. They're EU players in an NA tournament, by the way. This is round 5, I think. Round 6. I'm not really going to label what we're at until we're at the semis, but this is just sporadically going back and forth, because it's random! Straight for Bull Demon. This is looking like it's moving very quickly. 
Should have played, Sam. Should have played. It is looking very favorable for Guan so far. Not the most expected rotation. So, you know, it seems that that bull demon is going to be done for free. And he's still going to be back in time for that red, maybe. It's going to start ticking now. Radle needs to go for it immediately, actually. So it's just spawning. Second tier Hydra for the Guan, which is going to be really tough for the Artemis to deal with. I'd say this is very, very, very tough for Artemis right now. No defense. An ability-based bruiser just slapping you with Hydra's procs. Prot shred with the three when you don't even have prots. You can ult the Artemis ult. Artemis just isn't that great in general. This looks like it's going to be an unfortunate situation for Radel here. Looking to clear the wave so that the aggro of the... Oh, the dash just gets them out of range and he still held the med, wasn't even worried. Medding now. Oh, that was so close. Radel went a, went a little bit to the left. He might have been okay. I don't even know if he could have held his ult for a split second longer if it would have helped, but it doesn't look likely. Alrighty, thank you for the gift, Giga. Yeah, this is looking like an unfortunate situation for Artemis. I would see this very much as Guan Yu winning it. But if they can get late game, Artemis would 100% have a chance, in my opinion. I could 100% see Artemis being able to, you know, slap a bunch of crits, sustain with lifesteal, play it carefully, ult his ult for the stun. But that's pretty much it. Getting to that point is extremely difficult when you're playing against a character with Prod Shred. Hydra's cancel with the, the dash is just so much DPS, dude. I think crit is Artemis' only saving grace. Double sustain, it seems, is the idea Radel's going through right now. There we go. Enough for oh, at least Hydra's in a first tier on the Guan Yu, but all he wants to do right now. Pressure out all the buffs, soak up as much experience as he can. Already level 12, gonna for a second relic, second tier into his, uh, his Crusher, I would assume. Only using the second tier Hydras. Two more stacks in the Transcendence, and that's at least 15% uh, cooldown as well. Choosing not to pick up the blue. Interesting. I wonder why he did that. Brody's still in the game? Wait, he should be done, shouldn't he? Didn't he just face the guy he's up against? Get some big names, yeah. I mean, we got Mantos and Radel right here. It is interesting to see, though. Like, there is a lot of... Like, this tournament is very clearly RNG. You know, no shit. It's RNG. But, as you can see, a lot of the top-tier players, regardless of, of RNG, have made it this far into the tournament. Proking his lifesteal that Guan Yu did there, but so much healing on the Artemis. He could continue to pressure forward. Maybe, you know, engage at that red buff. Good damage. Dashed in. Oh, just misses for the Artemis on the three. That could have been good for him. Ooh. Secured by the Guan Yu with 1600 gold in hand. That is looking like a finished item, that's for sure. What are you talking about, Monkey? Radle absolutely frags. We're seeing one unfortunate matchup. Watch your mouth. Radle would absolutely destroy you any day. The Crusher, like I presumed, is completed. Into the blink with Guan. We're seeing a lot of blinks in this tournament, that's for sure. The burst, the blink burst has just been crazy. We saw, who was it that we saw? We saw Hydrogen. We saw Hydrogen go absolutely apeshit with the crit Vamana blink strategy. Crusher for the attack speed, he's able to whittle on this bull demon so fast. Boom. Just like that. Radel looking to fight this. It is a bit of an awkward spot. The Guan Yu pressuring the tower a little bit. I still don't know. Oh, there we go. Hits the three. He's still looking to fight that. Ooh, good ult. Ult's the ult. 
Shell comes out. One more auto attacker too. Med comes out as well. Using the sustain to his advantage. He does have to back. Backing immediately though. If Radel doesn't stop this. Okay. Good. Radel stops it. He needs to buy as much time as he can with the bull demon. Okay. He's able to get this tower whittled down as well. Hydra's completed for the Guan. Blink's still up. Sprint's still up on the Artemis. He... It might have been worth for the Artemis to, to to sprint and just over like completely commit there, but he probably got a little paranoid with the med still up. Radel, no, he's gonna blink through the wall. He has vision on you. Oh, just wait until that's secured. Blink is up, but that three does so much damage. No, oh, no. Oh, well, fail not is complete. I like Radel's strategy with the build, but to implement it and get it online, he needed a kill there to stand a chance. Oh my goodness. Jeez, dude. Well, he's got a bit of crit online with fail not. Not too much, you know, additional with the ult. Lots of sustain against no sustain on the Guan Yu. Guan Yu with full cooldown though. Sustaining back up with Azzy proc. Yeah, he's in range of the ult with the three. One more auto will do it! Uh, two more autos! Come on, right out! I mean, no, uh, well played by both players. Alright, there we go! A fucking revenge kill comes out. No anti-heal. The Aziprock came in clutch. Ult with the crit just went absolutely insane. <laughs> oh, so his build strategy did come in to fruition in that engagement. He's able to get the red as well. No beads necessary. I, it was a little worrisome for the Artemis once Guan Yu ulted there. Uh, just because he has already 20% cooldown. No bias here. I just want it to be, you know, a relatively even match. You know, I, I'm rooting for both. I love them both, man. I love Mantos. I love Radial. Radial. I want them both to have a chance. And that was a huge kill for Radial. <laughs> Going into a dominance, it seems, next. Not committing to the crit, which is interesting. Red buff, and seemingly a 500 potion on the Artemis. He needs to commit to these fights. Because Guan Yu does not have anti-heal just yet. So he knows that he needs to, you know, be on top of this. The, the clear on the Artemis as well isn't very good. Shell up for Artemis, as well as Sprint and Ten. Both relics essentially up for these engagements. But I would double down with the crit if I was Artemis, personally. Or even go, like, an Audi bow would be okay. Because you see the crit is just so terrible. Gotta remember, Artemis is still an ADC. Poking from a distance is huge. Guan Yu has had the early game in his clutches. But if Artemis can make it to late game... I don't know, man. It's, it's, it's a tough call. Artemis almost enough for whatever item he's building next. Full tier beats they completed on the Guan. That's going to put Artemis in a very tough spot. Special is not allowed. Oh my goodness. I thought he was going to go for that. That would have been a big call. Guan Yu over at red though. That would have been a full bull, a free bull. He doesn't know that. Riddle keeping back at the blue. In case he's expecting that blink. Still has red up. Enough for his full tier dom. He's probably going to want to get back and get that item online as soon as possible. Knowing that he needs any advantage he can get in these situations. Boom, dominance is complete. Phoenix is spawning uh, really soon. Mantos in no rush to pressure him out right now. Just making sure he can get that Phoenix. Riddle not seeming to mind. One level behind. That's all he wants. Ulting immediately. Just missing the one. Hydra's proc on that as well. Guan in a bit of an awkward spot, but he did proc med beforehand. Still gets the stun off, but he's going to disengage. Artemis with a sprint. I don't know if it's enough to catch him, though. He just wasted his three. Had he not used the three? Maybe. Just missed the trap. The trap would have probably forced out the Guan ult, but I still think the Guan Yu would have had the Phoenix, as he would have just ulted him in place and then... Slapped him with a Hydra's proc. Red buff spawning somewhat soon. Both players getting close to late game. Guan Yu thinking about what item he's going to go next. I would assume like a Heartseeker or something would be okay here. Maybe even a Deathbringer. If he really wanted to. <laughs> Deathbringer could be nice. Ooh, some sustain up in here. Okay. 
Gradel getting the red again, which isn't good for Guan. Oh, even levels now. Almost even gold. Phoenix down on order side, though. <clears throat> this is any man's game now, dude. This is actually pretty even now. And I, I'm starting to feel like it's going to favor Artemis. I'll be real. But again, one misplay on either side. Ooh. Gets the passive off with those auto attacks. Trying to get as close to him as he can. One, you force the back off. The autos are hitting very hard. Bring those crits. That's huge. Huge DPS sustaining off of the wave as he wasn't able to get the beat stick off. Guan Yu forced to retreat as Artemis just sustains completely back up to full. No relics used on either side. As they are down. Watches Guan Yu back. So he's going to secure the bull demon now. Although it's not going to do much for him unless he decides to push. It does make it so the Guan Yu isn't able to get bull demon. And just, you know, pressure him out stupidly hard. I'm curious to what the Artemis is going to go next. I would go an Audibo or more crit. Okay. That makes sense if I were him. Upgraded the shell as well. The mitigations at this stage in the game. Guan Yu with 20 seconds on each relic. Artemis with both. About a minute for that Phoenix to respawn. Looks like he's surveying that blue buff. Now Artemis knows where he is. <sighs> wow. Insta kill. Can someone time Mantos out, please? Mods. Alright. So there we go. Phoenix is coming up, but he his wave is it enough to kill them? It looks like it. And he already has Bull Demon. Is that there's no way that's game, but that's at least Phoenix. There we go. Phoenix is down. Artemis after this Phoenix should have enough for a round Deathbringer. His wave is going to clear the last remaining five minions, so he's able to secure that. Most likely just going to run. Get the slow off, but it's immune by Mantos. Gets the CC off. Artemis is still going to have ult, though. So, Guan Yu's forced to back off. The double sustain is paying off for Radel as well. Who is going to be able to back. And get a full tier Deathbringer, I presume. There we go. Wants this red buff too. This isn't looking good for Guan, dude. Like I said, Guan definitely had the advantage early. Oh, but he waited. Oh, and he caught the dash. Didn't even need the Deathbringer. Oh, oh Radel! Radel, come on! Oh, he went the wrong way twice! He's not even gonna chase him! Oh, he had the game in the bag! That's all he had to do. Unfortunate. But he's still able to get red. Both relics down on the Guan Yu. And Artemis can back with 2.4k gold in hand. It doesn't like... Dude, it's looking less and less favorable for Guan. I don't think there's much he can do at this point. He needed to finish that around mid-game. The second that that hit, like, this hit late game, dude. Oof. <laughs> Riddle, yikes. <laughs> Ooh, he didn't see the war being placed in... Oh! Oh. Oh. Well, GG's. Unfortunately, late game came into full effect there. Onward to the next game. Okay, what? What? Who Yi versus Freya? What is this? Oh my goodness. It's 18 minutes in. Oh my god. Oh my god. Whoa! Oh, okay. So their match just ended. All right. No one spoil it. So Barty had the Phoenix. Freya just killed him. We're a little late to this because the spectator took forever. But okay, no Phoenix for the Freya though. Not looking to push up. Barty's going into a crit. Why wouldn't he just get the Phoenix? Okay. So Barty got. Who uses is Freya? What is this? Is this just a normal tournament? Okay. So Barty went to an ability base. It's completely even. 
in a late game setting. Let's. I am curious who's gonna win this. Wow, we just got into the heat of it. Twenty minutes. A twenty minute game. Okay, so Freya has beads. Beads are down currently. He knows this. Jumps in. And his ult's still down, but good whoop by the Freya. That would have been it. That would have been game. Ooh. Chill out as well. It looks like that's going to be Phoenix again for Barty. Damn, what a match, dude. Shit's going down. That's that's at least thorns off of Barty, though. Toxic Blade off of that lifesteal into the upgraded Deathbringer. Enough for whatever item it is he's trying to finish, which seems to be an Azzy, I presume. Freya just finished her full build as well with Demonic, for some reason. I feel like Demonic isn't really necessary. I would have went Apolly. Why doesn't he Apolly? He's crazy. Okay, so there we go. Brody looking to just secure the blue. Maybe reset that cooldown of his. I don't know what he's doing. Okay, he's crazy. Freya with the whoop. What the fuck, Barty? Why would you no? Why would you go for? Th he wasn't even marked. Was his jump down? No. What happened? What the fuck? No. You have crit, and the man went for a triple bounce. No. He would have even healed it up. He had. <laughs> he. <w> <laughs> He would have just healed it up. He doesn't have beat stick or anything. No, Barty. I mean, I know it's Freya things. Damn it, poor Barty. Freya is so dumb. Damn, dude. Fuck. Unfortunate, dude. Fuck. GG's. Radle versus Hydrogen. For those of you that don't know, Hydrogen used, uh, used to be in my clan. Ooh, Radle got a tanky character. He's another top player. He plays in the S, uh, SML, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, and here we have the round before the semis. Round six of eight rounds in this ginormous tournament. Everyone, get your predictions in. We've got Radel on Erlong versus Hydrogen on the Hunbats. This is an interesting one, that is for sure. Both players starting the Transcendence beats an Erlong Carapace coming out. On the the baguette man that we've got here, as well as obviously the wing shard. So, I I kind of think, in my opinion, I think hydrogen has the advantage here. Did jump in place though. Doesn't proc his. Oh, he did proc his winged. Okay, still has med. I think. That if they get late game, this favors Hunbats, because Hunbats with ability-based damage with a couple Hydra's procs, no defense. You know, Erlong's good, but ability-based late game with Hydra's procs is a little too good. Like, even if he beats as the ult, he gets a Hydra's proc off of that, you know. But, I'd say, like, mid-game would probably go with, especially with crit, to uh, the Erlong here. And Radle is known for his tankier characters, that's for sure. But you can't count out Hydrogen. Both very good players here. Going straight for the wave. Hydrogen just being a little limp on the jump. Good poke, but he is using pretty much all of his mana. But he does have med to sustain while Radle only has that beads. Level 4 on Radle already. Lack of mana. Hydrogen either has to proc this med and defend the red. Or give it up. One of the two. Radel has to know that he has the met up. I presume. But Radel still has a good bit of mana to work with. There goes the med. Going into his three. Getting the shield. Blocking a bit of damage. As well as bursting him down. Making that med essentially. You know. Pointless. Got a bit of sustain out. But it looks like the red buff is still going to go to Radel. Completely out of mana. On the Hunbats. And... Erlong goes straight for red. Both players getting closer and closer to Transcendence. Unbats backing. Not going for the blue as he has no mana. Choosing to go into a Chalice. Both players, actually, as opposed to just rushing down that Transcendence. I personally like to just rush the Transcendence before I get a Chalice. Get the stacks going and then buy it. 
and just not fight until it's done. Or say I'm not going to fight and then proceed to fight and die. But that's just me. Okay. Clearing a couple creeps. Not going for his blue Hunbats did. But Radil still has a buff as well. With the red. Going with his turtle. Jumping in place on the Hunbats. Lots of pressure from the Erlong here. The early game protections along with the shield. Um, and the... The healing that comes with his ultimate is just so much pressure that the Hunbats has to deal with. He needs to not be snowballed on too hard. Because if Erlong gets ahead, gets a boomerang or something, bro. Ooh. -ooh. Hello, fish. <laughs> Why does the camera keep making me do that? So yeah. Erlong still doesn't have that transcendence online yet. And that blue buff is up. So Hydrogen is going to get some stacks earlier on than him. And that blue buff is actually down, and I wasn't paying attention. Um, But, ooh, Hydrogen actually reset the aggro on the Cyclops, so he's going to have to go back for that. But he still gets two Cyclopses over the Nun that Erlong was able to get. Erlong knock up all the days. I used to love Erlong, man. Erlong had Hastened on his three and a knock up. Could you imagine? A hasten Fatalis on his three. So both players with uh, relics up for this next engagement. Nothing to farm on the map. Nothing to do with either player here. You gotta assume he's going into Hydra's. But that could be a Jotun's. Could be a beat stick. We'll see. Backing off. Getting kind of ready for the fight for red. We'll see. I am curious what Radel builds next. Looks like it might be an Azzy. It seems like the only really useful item in this situation. That I can think of. Just continuous sustain. So even if he doesn't get anti-heal. Uh, for the ultimate on its own. He's also going to have to deal with continuous sustain in each fight. Because they both do have to get up close and personal. So if they're in a, an iffy situation. It could be very easy. Ooh nice. It could be quite easy for Radle to just disengage and get that healing off. Nothing really is going to come out of that. Radle felt none of you to use his beads. Still having med up. There's no way he's out boxing an Erlong shed. Red, red buff spawning really soon. Hits the two onto him. Hydrogen still having med up. Both shards up as well. Uh, Carapace shard going into this against the Erlong might be big. Out of range of the two. Now it's not looking so good. Hydrogen maintaining distance. Healing up with his chalice. I would turn with this. If you have Carapace... Use that, you know, you have your med, you have your cooldowns. Ooh, force the proc out the med, dash still down. Both <laughs> kind of lost in thought here, I don't know what's going on. Radel trying to predict where this Hunbats is trying to go. Hunbats is just waiting to jump over the wall. Radel doesn't mind as he's able to just, you know, get that red for free, essentially. Clearing that and disengaging. Hunbats does not want to fight, so Radel is going to go out of his way to... Not invade the blue, stop his back, and then go for the blue. Hydrogen could go for that red. But either way, even if he does do that red, Erlong's at least getting two buffs. So Erlong is going to come out on top of this. Ooh. Carapace still up. Hunbat's ult. Up by now, I presume. Beads are probably going to be forced out. Ooh, three hits onto him, but it bounces back to the minions. Just wants that red, so it's no big deal. Nothing too much to worry about. Blue is still up. This actually isn't looking as good for Radel now. I think he overextended in those engagements. I'm assuming that Radel didn't get that, yeah. Looks like the farm is going on the side of the Hunbats now. Hunbats being able to back for most likely a Beatstick or Jotuns, depending on what he's thinking. Jotuns it is. Okay, I kind of figured. Anti-heal is important. But not ridiculously important in comparison to just being able to jump out and making sure that he's try you know, he can somewhat make it to late game. Because like I said, I think late game is uh Unbats' best bet and just burst. Ooh, good ult. Radel still Oh, using the Azzy proc perfectly! Knowing that the Azzy was gonna proc didn't use his beads. This man is holding onto those fucking beads by the balls, dude. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Going in, jumps! Oh, he jumped in place! 
Wow, great play by the Hunbats with the Carapace Shard. Reducing those protections. Well played by Radle. Not even beadsing. Knowing the Az is going to proc. Life stealing back up. Oh my goodness, this is intense. Very well played on both ends there. Shoutouts to Joel, of course. Yeah, a little late to the wave. He's going to finish stacking up his Transcendence now. Both, pretty much everybody's going Transcendence. The power is just way too useful in pretty much every single matchup. Hydra's online now. I don't know, man. I think this is looking very favored for the Hunbats. But you, you never know. More. More! I personally think that this is going to go in the Hunbats' favor. Ooh, there goes the shield immediately. But, like I said, sustain. Forced to jump out. Half the shit, forced to wipe. Missing just one creep there. Hydrogen kind of surveying the area in case. He might be on Bull Demon. A second relic for the Humbats as well. With a shell into the sprint for the Erlong as well. Red buff spawning relatively soon. I'm assuming that the, yeah, those have respawned. Going straight to the mid, getting every piece of farm that he can. Radil going into what? A Kins? Hmm. I'm not sure what he's going here. I feel like Bladed could have been OP. Radil does still have the timer. Ooh. An unfortunate situation for Radil. Both beads and ult exhausted without the use of a Hunbat's ult even. That was very favorable at first, but it, oh, that sucks, dude. That freaking stinks. Well played by Hydra, though. Jumps out, gets his ult, gets his beads. Bada boom, bada bing. That is a huge, huge lead for Hunbats here. He can go take his blue if he wants to. He can take the red. That's a tower. That's at least a level and a half lead off of that, along with maybe 1k gold if he gets pretty much everything off of this. Maybe more like 800, but... I am genuinely curious as to what the hell Radel's gonna build next. These are the quarterfinals. So is he going... Like, I would think that you'd go into, like, burst crit. But this is either an Eggsy or a Kins. I oh, man. So I really don't know what his plan is with this build. He could be... Uh, no. I was about to say, he could be going heavy Eggsy, but like that's also kind of pointless because the percentage ban. He's getting Kins. Okay. He did not get Kins. He was saving up... Okay. I'm not too sure. He's getting a lot of pen. Which is... Oh, wow. That's some burst, though. Maybe with those auto cancels, he wants that instant penetration. Riddle looking up. He did have a ward around there, but I don't think it was in range. He might go straight for the bull demon here. Hydrogen seemingly unaware. Securing bull demon makes it so that he can't get his phoenix pressured out. So he gets that for free. Beats are up in 30. It looks like he's going into a beat stick next. Checks the blue, but it is down. Radle's going to make it back in time for that wave as well. I was also thinking Ferocious Exe, but, like, that's so much pen. Maybe he's thinking Ferocious Exe combined. Ooh, wait, what sprint is this? The Hasten Sprint? Yeah, he went Hasten Sprint. I thought maybe he'd buy a Hasten, but Hasten Sprint? He could be going... I thought Ferocious Exe, but that's so much pen. I feel like that works better on Assassins, but it depends. You know, I... Radle literally made one of the dual meta builds. Like, the what, like the double stacking Guardian build was his, like, him. He was the one that made it. No beats for the Hun Bats. Those ults are pretty big. No anti-heal on the Bats as well, either. So he's able to sustain fully, relatively easily. Hun Bats, did just jump? If he hits the two, and he's in a really bad spot! With the hasten sprint, shell comes out, but the jump comes just back up. The sustain of that Azzy coming in clutch without any anti-heal on Humbats' side. Almost. 
almost was enough to burst him down. Had he up, had that ferocious Eggsy there, definitely would have had a kill there too. Beads down on the Erlong for at least two minutes. Oath Relics, probably looking to just get this and dip immediately. Unbats, not even enough for his net. Oh, not even looking to dip. As he procs, so he's just going to continue to sustain. Like I said, both melee characters, he needs to get close to even apply that anti-heal if he has it. A very even game we have here. Just misses his three. No Hydra's proc for him. Red buff just spawning. After that wave, he should have enough for full tier beat stick. Radle with almost 2k gold in hand. I'm very curious to what he's going to whip out here. This is quite the match, dude. My mouth is goddamn dry. I have not talked this much in a long time. Okay. There we go. Sorry, my pants are texting me. So what? He's going even more percentage pen. Dude, holy. I can see the crusher. It looks like he had so much gold that he wanted to wait and try and get that online. So yeah, not looking to engage for another minute until at least he has beads up. Quarterfinals. There's a lot at stake here. If they make it to here, there's at least a 1 in 4 chance, based on RNG, that they at least get some of the gems. Just saw Hunbats walk that way, waiting around the corner, immediately going for him, but there goes the ult, but there's way too much burst radar with no beads, even flanking him just doesn't work. Man, like I said, Hunbats with auto cancels with Hydras? Damn, dude. Not a fight you want to take. It's looking like that is at least Phoenix here. Radle with a nice, nice gank rotation, but Hunbath's just the burst, man. I think Radle's just building too much percentage pen. Like, like Hunbath's only has 80, 80 physical protections. He's only getting so much off of that. Like, base penetration items would honestly do more at this point. But I don't know. Radel could let him cook. Let him cook, dude. Let him cook. Going straight for a bull demon too. Getting that down right now. Beads up. 700 gold in hand. Wants to get it now. Get that additional gold before Hamets get that gets that crit online. 500 potion on both players here. They're gonna have to all in it, boys! Ooh, just narrowly misses the three. Radel has to... Even if Radel kills him here, he doesn't get anything guaranteed off of that. There's more at stake for Radel than there is for Hydrogen in these engagements. Not killing these three as he's waiting. Oh, beads are still up. Uses his beads. Hydrogen predicts this and is able to just walk away. Radel with the sprint, though. Able to catch up. Med comes out as well as the shell. I think this is a kill for Radel, but the Hydro procs are some... Oh, but the three comes out. There we go. Even though he got the kill... That's both of his relics down, and his phoenix is still going to be down up to these engagements. Although he did get a nice return kill. Like I said, there was way more at stake for Radel. Hydrogen only loses so much in that engagement. And it's not much, like, at all in general. There we go. A nice return kill. 1800 gold in hand. I feel like even if he was to go full ability-based, he would have done so much better in that engagement. Just the Hydra procs, like a little bit of attack speed, but like... I don't know, man. If this motherfucker buys more percentage pen, I'm gonna lose my goddamn mind. What are you buying, Radle? What are you, what are you buying? Okay. Audibo. I'm looking at you. Alright? Look at me. Don't buy any more. Okay. We're clear. He's got, he's got, uh, he knows what's up. He's got Deathbringer online, no beads. This is a very, very, very risky situation for him. If Hunbats gets in there, dude, he's done. If he gets caught out with one of four, he's gonna have to give up the Phoenix. He doesn't really have a choice here, I'd say. He could just all in the Titan. If he stands too close to the Titan, three's gonna connect to him. He tried to bait forward, and just like that, there's game. Yep. 
I told you. That's essentially how it's gonna go. Okay. GG's. Well played. I think someone accidentally paused. I think Fredel fucking slammed his keyboard. GG's. Onward to the next one. Well played by both players. The semi-finals game one. We have Hydrogen versus the other another. Get your predictions in on who will come out the victor. We got Ymir versus Persephone. What an interesting one. I feel like Persephone... I don't know, dude. Like, if it gets late game with Ymir, Pauly Auto is like... He gets caught out one time. I mean, it's easier, obviously, for Persephone to poke, but a lot of people are just whipping out the blinks, dude. Semi-finals, get your votes in. Good luck to everyone that has made it this far. Ooh, interesting. Bobby Yaga versus Loki. So, oh, Ymir going the horrific strategy, whipping out that Rainian strat. The strategy of legend! Anyways, let's get it going! The early base health of Ymir. Ooh, good catch. No beads. Auto. Oh, already horrificing. Nah, it depends. Might be worse, but Persephone did start with that med, so he's got lots of sustain. Hydrogen immediately going back in, just missing the two, getting hit by also to a Persephone, getting poked out and whittled down, making that initial engagement just not very good for him. Didn't work out as much as we thought it would. So, who who, who we think's winning? People are betting on the Ymir, okay. I might see Persephone, like, I think, realistically, Persephone's got the... Ooh, good bait forward into the cooldown reset, meaning his one's gonna come up just about in time! Never mind the two secures the kill. Nice bait by other another. Ymir waiting patiently for him to use his three and get hit by all of these, but the Persephone just hits him once with one of these, and then does it, poking him out even harder. Bada boom, bada bing. Uh-oh, boys. Ymir believers. First blood has gone to Persephone. Persephone picking up the red. Moving back straight to base. Might wait for that Thoth, it looks like. There's no way Ymir's probably invading this, so there's nothing for him to lose by kind of waiting here. Maybe a creep or two. But realistically, having those stacks online is going to be super important. Hydrogen using his relics, his relic just a little too quickly. Jumping the gum, gum? Jumping the gun just a little, little too fast. Thinking that it could have killed him off that. Nice freeze, decent poke, but it's not going to be enough to kill. Good ult, and his jump is down. Oh, if he had a full tier Bancroft there, he has enough gold for it. That would have been a nice revenge kill for the Ymir. Dash is still up. I don't think the Persephone is too worried. Nice block by the Ymir on the Persephone 1. Hydrogen just looking to get back to base here. Returning back. Probably switch between players. I don't know. So, that is a full tier Bancrofts online for the Ymir. Persephone already stacking up the Thoth. Probably going into a Cronus Pennant. It is a battle of cooldowns per for Persephone. If she's caught out without her dash against the Ymir, just slapping her tits around with a horrific and a wing shard, dude. Oh. My goodness, I won't be able to upload this to YouTube. Straight to Pornhub! Alright, insta-clear from Ymir already. Actually, a level lead coming up for Ymir somehow. Three minutes. Ooh, both the chests are up. Hydrogen looking to secure these. Knowing Persephone is going to try and steal it. Takes the poke. Ooh, getting both of the minis by the little Cyclopses, but not the mids, which I think the mids are actually worth more. Red buff spawning relatively soon. Ymir backing for his next item, which is what, another Toxic Blade? Just to really deal with that med early game. Movement speed seems to be a little favorable, I'd say, in this uh, in this tournament, just to keep it close to them. Anyways, red buff is about to spawn. 
They, okay, Ymir, <laughs> imagine we did the whole tournament like that. Um, Ymir's just waiting up around that red buff. He's trying to bait him forward, but the other another is prepared for it. Ooh, good ult, holding him in place, but retaliates with his own ult. Knowing his dash wasn't used. Med coming out for other another. Was <laughs> it playing League of Legends? <laughs> Lots of health on Hydrogen's side, the movement speed as well as the additional health, we saw that earlier on in the tournament, as well into one hit, should almost do it, so close for the re revenge kill, but just not enough. The Bancroft's damage late or early game, low health, full passive Bancroft's is nothing to joke around about, dude. That combined with Ymir passive is so strong, still horrific and wing shard still up. Persephone looking to go for the blue buff. Seconds here into that Toxic Blade for our boy Ymir over here. Ymir is here. No cooldown on the Persephone. That dash takes forever. And Ymir is definitely taking very, very, very good engagements knowing that that is uh, just not ready yet. Because that freeze is most likely coming up around or before the same time. I don't know. He seems to know what he's doing. Knows the cooldown's better than me, because I don't fucking play Persephone. <laughs> Level 10, Ymir does have a lead. He has been pressuring out very hard here. Rotating towards the mid, it looks like it's going to be a battle. The additional health is definitely going to help with uh, just surviving the early game sections, as well as Chronos Pendant for these early sections, combined with him picking up blue buff consistently. So yeah, not too much use of this horrific as we'd like to see, because he's already level 10 and he's only used it once in one situation that wasn't too beneficial for him, unfortunately. Bolt your Toxic Blade online, though, making that med a little less useful. Which may have been his plan. But even if it wasn't, the additional movement speed combined with that health is just... Health is key. Health is very important in these kind of situations. For the most part. But if you can't get the health online and you rush early game, I mean... Lots of poke with that poly. For mages, at least. Consistent poke. Ymir looking to back. Persephone aware. If if he knew that those Cyclopses were up, I'm assuming you wouldn't have stopped that back. Ymir looking to rotate straight over to that Cyclops. Persephone, not a care to give. Hydrogen... Being as optimal as possible, bringing it over to himself, sacrificing it for the, for the Persephone, I see. Oh, catching the Persephone off guard, ulting her ult for the CC immunity, horrific up, boom, with the wing shard, doesn't even need it, just uses the wing shard, but it turns out, and other, another, completely 180s the engagement, he should have blocked the horrific, the dash came out just in time because of the Kronos pennant, what a turnaround, oh my goodness, Hydrogen, Thought he had that in the bag, and he did, but the other another, other another whips it out, dude. Oh my goodness, slap the dominance right on the table. Holy moly, what a turnaround. There we go, Polly is starting to be built by the Persephone. Two kills on the board for Persephone. Only 500 gold down, though, relatively even in terms of the XP department. Red buff spawning just now. If Hydrogen's not seeing that he's there immediately, I don't think he can secure this in time, though. Oh, just enough to do it. Nice jukes by Hydrogen picking up the red buff. Good clip, Vinny. Hydrogen doing a good job of keeping up and farm, making sure he can get everything, you know, possible on the map. Not wasting a moment for his boss to spawn. So even though he is a little bit behind, you know, he's maintaining a relatively close, you know, XP situation. The additional health is helping a lot. Nice wall. Hydrogen is just so quick with those walls, dude. Ooh, beads coming up from other another. Nice juke by Hydrogen. Forcing him, and then Horrific into the ult with the bank cross. There's so much damage slowed into the two with Horrific. Secures it, and there we go. A revenge kill comes out for the Ymir. Persephone putting herself so in a position she got so confident with that ultimate, even though it was hit by the Ymir wall, that she unfortunately put herself at a position. Nice turnaround for Hydrogen. Huge revenge kill, completely evening the game up. He's actually ahead... An experience now. 
There we go. You're backing for a full tier dem demonic? Interesting. I Looks like he's going a pure attack speed build. I would have thought like a burst build would have been a little better, but... Hydrogen still has not bought a second relic either. Wanting that additional movement speed that uh, comes out with the with his winged. Going for the mids. The additional help that he has is coming in clutch, as you can see. So even though he loses a lot of he loses a lot of health when he gets low, he technically still has like quite a bit of health to work with. Along with that Bancross passive, dude. Boom. Mir is bullying. Persephone does have a poly online now, too. Just dash. Ymir was ready for it. Or, and so was the Persephone, doing tons of damage with that poly. Ults in retaliation, though. Bit of an iffy situation. This could go in anyone's favor. No defense makes this very iffy for either person. Very close. Very, very close match. Red team still has the advantage in terms of gold. Curious to see what Persephone goes next. Doubling down on the lifesteal, going into either a Bancrofts or a Typhons, maybe. An interesting pickup. Red buff spawning relatively soon. Persephone's gonna make it back in time. Hydrogen waiting. Blocking the one. Good blocks by the Ymir walls all around from Hydrogen. No anti-heal on Persephone's side as well, so that Bancrofts, although it's only one, one lifesteal item, is just doing so much. Still gets that red. Healing up quite a bit, but Hydrogen's still half. Nice block. Ooh, turns around to freeze. Still a court health. Just narrowly misses the ult. Although they're still looking at this. Good jukes by Hydrogen. Damn, the juke shoes, dude. Man's risking it all as Ymir. Wait for the dash, just around the corner, Persephone beads still up, he's not too worried, gets the slow, forces the beads, baited him with the wing shard, horrific, just for the beads, which is more than worth for the Ymir, he's just gonna back off, clear the wave, but Persephone's gonna jump over the wall, he still doesn't want to fight this bank, or, or, poly, you know, autos, Persephone are a lot, and it looks like he's able to whittle down that phoenix, jumping in, oh, wow, I can't believe that didn't stop his back. Not enough to take it just yet. The poly shots from a distance. You never count either person out of this match. Persephone's got range. You know, Ymir's got crazy bursts with these auto attacks and his passive. He's using horrific super effectively. Still not getting rid of that wing shard. Doesn't even want to blink. Doesn't want anything. Knows his beads are down. Going to bait him out around the Phoenix, but instead minions are like, what's up? Okay, so nothing happens. Oh, good dude, Hydrogen. That man laced up his Nikes today. My goodness, he is gliding with these jukes. Ooh. Nice wall, both players. Bolts are up. Beads still down the Persephone. Hydrogen willfully, uh, willfully aware of that. Just chilling, trying to get all the XP that he can. A level lead still on the Ymir as well. Uh, yes, face. I've said it about eight times now. All right, the movement speed on Ymir. I think he's using the movement speed to try and close the gap every time Persephone dashes, which is why that he why he uh, started the toxic blade there. As it is a quick way of getting attack speed online. Fifteen hundred gold in hand for hydrogen, probably in the base there. Got to be careful. Oh, and that's that's really not good for hydrogen. But Persephone dashes down. It seems. Whoa. Am I playing in this? A man, you know what? We, he's got cojones. I'll, I'll give him that. <laughs> Let me change the prediction. So he has Bancrofts online. I think the reason that Persephone's doubling down on the lifestyle here is specifically because Ymir needs to get close to proc that uh, that toxic. Although he does have anti heal, he needs to be up in his face. So if Persephone doesn't come close, you know he can get those poly autos off, just slam him, slam the wave with abilities and maintain distance, and boom. 
<clears throat> Shut up, face. Literally no one gets that joke. Okay, so there we go. Enough for a full tier poly. That's gonna be a bursty Ymir. That is going to be one bursty Ymir. I don't know why he doesn't get blink. Like why? Why is he getting blink? There's no way Horn Shard is that worth it. Like blink puts you like in. St Who gives a fuck about mobility when you can teleport, my guy? It's like fuck. I really don't understand why he's not going it. I mean, he might have, like, a, a reason for it. I mean, like, he clearly does. He knows what he's doing. He's both two level, very high level players. He is really... <laughs> oh my god! He keeps hitting his plant and I almost just fucking died. <laughs> in the tower, I would have died laughing. <laughs> if in the semifinals he died in the fucking tower because he hit the plants, I would have died. <laughs> oh my goodness. That was scary. Okay, Persephone now has anti-heal online when she can apply from a distance as opposed to Ymir. Ymir maybe going into a gem next. Still no second relic. You just heard him use his two around there. He has vision on him. Hydrogen also aware. Ooh, just around the corner. Good ult retaliation. Uses the one. Instantly almost kills that uh, that ultimate there. Does poly shot count as two or something? Does that instantly die? Ooh. Solid connections there. Putting Ymir in a very awkward spot. Using the three to clear the wave. Ymir just fucking booking it. He buy his wing shard for a reason. Gonna heal off the way before Divine is proc'd on him, but it's still, that's not very much health. Using the one to block it. Beads are still up on the Persephone. Dash just puts him out of place. Oh my god, there's the Wing Blade! The Wing Shard that came out and used it for two seconds. It did actually, was kind of useful in that engagement, I'll say, but... I, I don't know. Oh, he's still going in! The Juke Shoes, Ymir, you're really going in on this! Run! Use that movement speed, go! Run! He looks so cute as he's running. You, you should not be happy right now! The polyprox on that phoenix are going to hurt as- Motherfucker, stop hitting your plants! <laughs> he did it again! <laughs> Relic Dagger. What the fuck? You went Relic Dagger and bought your second Relic 17 minutes in? Why? What? That was your plan? That's why he did that? Now he's doing it? That was your strategy? Why not just build the blink earlier? What the fuck is the difference? Okay, you know, I'll let him cook. I'll let him fucking cook. I'll let him cook. Beads are down. But he, I mean, Persephone does know that he is blink that, or blink because he was in the wave. I don't know, dude. <laughs> this one's over. Okay, I'll see it. You know, fuck me, bro. And you the gift, Giga. Thank you, Hazy, with the tier one. Persephone buying time until that beads are up. You know, probably going into a rod as well. Hydrogen, waiting, pa instantly blinking. He's been doing such a great job of, like, not needing the blink. you think he would have just fucking saved it. For when he knew about that. Persephone not even com- Wait, Persephone didn't even finish- Walk all the way back to the base. And he's still not checking bullet, he went down. Okay. Ooh, ooh, I mean, he's got Relic Deck. Actually, though, it doesn't matter. Alright, he's kinda cooking, chat. He upgraded his blink before he used the... Before he used it with that Relic Dagger, so it's only 40 seconds. What's, uh, what's this guy up to? <laughs> what's this guy doing? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> 27 seconds left. Beelining it for the Phoenix. 
I don't know, man. Something's starting to smell good. That attack speed. Still playing a little safe. No blink for 10. Moving back. Trying to bait him forward. Let's see what he does. Blink is up. Playing it carefully. Rod is up on the Persephone as well. He definitely knows the Blink is up. Hydrogen fucking schmoovin'. Not getting hit by anything. Good for him. Man is moving. He's got a lot of movement speed. <laughs> Ooh, baited that out. Ulting the ults. Ooh. Got his beads. And the engagement is finished. I'd say that's worth for Ymir. That is his beads and med down. I don't know. <laughs> he is so fucking quick. I don't know, dude. He's got a lot of HP. Like, and for 70, he doesn't even have a reaver. He's still doing good damage, though. Bold Demon is down, Red Buff's about to spawn, no cooldown other than Relic Dagger built in the, the Ymir either. Looking carefully, Persephone knows one, one big blink. Could be over, he's gotta be careful here. Whoever wins this match is guaranteed at least 3500 gems. This is definitely a, an interesting strategy for me. Wait. Do not tell me this motherfucker is saving up for a 3k bot. This game could end in any engagement, and this man is playing for the 40 minute game. Are you serious? Why not get the burning blink? Like, that's so good! It's up all the time! Is he really saving? He has almost 3k gold! Blink's up. He's always ready for that, though. And he gets the ult off in retaliation. He's got almost enough for the 3k bot. This is so fucking weird. Like, there's so much happening. I mean, it. Whoa, that minion! There he goes. He's gonna go buy. Th if you go. If you upgrade those relic hydrogen. I swear to Christ. Okay. There we go. 3k pot. There it is. He's got it under his belt. He's gonna be schmoovin', dude. He's got a red buff, a 3k pot. Man is fast as fuck. It's all led up to this. This one engagement. This man has invested. This man put down a mortgage. Let's see if it pays off or if he goes broke. Put some wards down. Looks like he's trying to force out the bull demon, knowing that her beads are still down for about 30 seconds. Might be hard to tell. Persephone not looking to defend it, it seems. Loss of attack speed. Able to completely destroy the bull demon. Backing is he? I'm assuming he's gonna get a 500, uh, 500 bot, probably, or upgraded blink. Okay. The man is going all in on the power department. Red buff just wore off. Stephanie hiding behind the wall, waiting for Ymir to move up on his own. Ymir has moved up. Oh my god, he's a psychic. Actually, he probably just went towards his blue. Blink into it. There goes the beads. Just auto attacking. Immune. Oh, but he gets the wall off, forcing him in place! But no, it doesn't pay off! He couldn't get close by the time he placed the wall! He got bursted by the Persephone! Oh, damn, it all led up to that! Unfortunate for the Ymir. It looks like Persephone is going to take the first win of the semi-finals. Well played. By both of them, that was very much a good attempt. Um, went to Persephone, he's able to keep his distance more easily. Anyways, round of applause to them both. Let's get some claps and chat. And onward to the finals of the Randomizer Royale. This is an interesting... What are the odds? Two hunters for the finals. But let's get to it! Here we go! The Grand Finals... Winner gets 5,000 gems. Here we go. We have Aiden Moment as well as the other another. I know this tournament is very, very, very much heavily on the RNG side. 
but it is interesting to see that at the same time, we still have two top tier dual players that have actually still made it to the finals. And all around, like the semis and everything. So, let's see how it goes. We've got uh, the Azzy start with Rama, I presume. Going with the, the Lifesteal build with Med, which was his strategy. Aiden going with the ability-based Scotty build, which goes without saying. Ooh, dashing in. Using the Astrals. Getting poked out a little bit, but Rama probably has the advantage overall as long as he hits his auto attacks. Calder blocking a lot. Still having Med on his side. Other than there, still hasn't even propped it. These guys are going at it, goddamn! Oh! <clears throat> Almost got a first blood! Oh my god, guys, slow down! The game just started! They're up for blood, dude! And Dosh dashed into Scotty. Holy lord. Both players are good clear. The three just nicks them. Shell still up on the Scotty. Other another. Not hitting as many autos as Aiden. Forced to retreat. Alright, let's get this on one of them. There we go. Low mana on Scotty as he chose to go some multi potions, but he's still. Ooh, he's got a lot of minions to body block that as well. Scotty seemingly having the advantage, especially early game. With this consistent poke. Rama forced to just back off, give up that red. Damn, pretty even on the predictions, too. The ice does indeed mess up Rama's dash, which is a bit of a disadvantage for him. As it is a momentum-based thing. Whichever direction he is going towards is where he's going to dash. Relatively even. Scotty getting more last hits. Pretty much even on experience. It is still very early on. Those two went absolutely ham. In the first, like, little while, which is pretty funny to see. Level 5 on both of them here. Scotty gonna clear one more wave, back for full tier transcendence, and then Rama going back for a full tier Ozzy. Boom, bada bing. Both players returning to base. Here we go, transcendence online, Ozzy like we thought. Like, this is such an interesting matchup for the finals. What are the odds? Oh, on YouTube. Um. Other another has already actually used his reroll because Aiden got AMC versus Terra. So Aiden has just gotten two ADCs back to back. That is his luck right now. But this is such an interesting matchup because Rama can obviously won through Calder. Dude, I'm trying to juke with him. I gotta stop. Good sustain as he procs. He's gonna look to heal off of the wave there. Yeah, this is neck and neck, dude. I'm good. Other Another's reroll is down, though. So even if Other Another wins this, you know, he might not get the most favorable matchup. They only have one reroll each in the finals. And the other has already used his. Aiden still has his. And with the luck Aiden has, man, AMC into Scotty, dude. Man just got two top, top tier dual gods. Holy. Imagine one of them goes to fence. I would... I would close stream. <laughs> but it's awesome that we haven't seen anybody break any rules this entire tournament. Unlike uh, some tournaments, it can be a little iffy. This one's been good. People. Getting up the two. Nice sustain. It looks like he's going... Oh, good poke by... Other another, just focusing on him here. Forced to dash out. Good use of his ones to get Calder. Just narrowly poked down. Med's still up on Rama. We're seeing a lot of either full-on ability-based poke, or he very heavy lifesteal-based builds. Good poke being blocked by Calder. And that's an easy way for him to deal with the sustain, but still Ozzy sustain. Combined with Med is what we are seeing pretty often in Duel as well, or in this tournament. 
as he proc. He's going to want to hit the wave as much as possible. Scotty juking as well as getting poked by minions. The Rama is... This is definitely favorable for Scotty, I will say. Scotty is just so good. But it is interesting to see, like I said, because Rama can auto-attack through Calder. Which is good, but with no defense, you still gotta take into account the fact that, you know... Scotty with Hydras and a bunch of uh, ability to poke. And just burst them to like half health at mid-game, at least. You know, even if you can hit through that doggo. I think Other and Other is going to have to go into a crit, a crit type build. The decent bit of attack speed. Have all of his arrows up and just fucking blast her. That's his only hope. If they go for a poking game, you know, where he doesn't have all his astral arrows up. I don't see Rama winning this. His only, like if this was a normal duel match, I don't think the Rama would really have a chance. But with crit and no ability to buy Spectral. You know, I'm thinking that there is potential for the Rama. It is two ADCs late game if, if they're even getting to that stage. Could go, you know, in any man's favor. But I will say, Scotty definitely has the early game advantage. That much is just, you know, a fact. Insta clear by the Rama. Ooh, Aiden getting a little, a little pokey. Nothing much coming of it. Other than another able to buy whatever he feels like at the base, which is going to be... A Kins. So he's opting to go instantly into Kins. Since there is... Since no one's building protections... You know, the health that's equal, you know... The damage based on the health isn't being, you know... Isn't going through the protections. So it's that instant amount of health. I mean, obviously base protections. But that's it. So now Scotty has that additional life steal as well. Not as much attack speed as Rama, but lots and lots and lots of damage with that transcendence. It's gonna be an iffy spot for other another. I'm very curious to what he's gonna build next. Scotty going on to Bull Demon. Rama with no awareness that he is going on to that. What is his next item going to be? Is it Yeah, okay, it's crit. That's what I guessed, but Scotty's taking advantage of the pressure she has early game. Which is gonna be scary for the Rama. Rama does not look too pleased about it. Good poke though. Trying to sustain up, but Scotty also has healing now. Reprocked on to that three. And he'll have to wave. Oh, was his dash still down? Even if he procs med. No, it's not enough. Scotty's able to just burst him down. Okay. And F6. I, uh... I, I guess there's round one. Oh my god. Aiden got AMC Scotty Um Okay. Well in I hope you enjoyed the randomizer tournament. I know that that was, uh... Not the most climactic ending. I do hope you guys enjoyed. Uh... Not the most expected of ending. Anyways. See you in the next one. Woo! Level one! I mean, we could reset. Okay, wait. Aiden, let's reset it, but level three with the same gods, okay? So it, nothing changes, but it's normal. Is that okay? Uh, 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 uh.
Oh, whatever. Let's just fucking play this. Yeah, I probably close stream. Let's just let's just play this. <laughs> oh no. Oh. Oh, I, oh, why did I have to get a good god for this? <laughs> Are you, I have a risk of Poseidon! <sighs> oh, I missed some XP. This feels weird playing. And if I win, I get all 10,000 gems. Easy. What is my frames? I keep skipping. Your middle tower's under attack. Game in the finals, eight and one. Oh my god, you got level three before me? That's cheating. He got level 3 because he got there before me. What is that skin? Those crows are weird. Dark magic! If Aiden manages to win this, I'll give him a, a tier 4 skin. This does not look very favorable for him, though. But it is no defense. $50 to the winners? <clears throat> Oops. <clears throat> Fuck off! I was doing like a shtick where I was tryharding, but it didn't work. Okay, the more I think about it, as much as I like, kind of scoffed at this because I feel like Poseidon just kind of wins it, I don't have defense. I feel like if I'm not careful, one kiss with a 3-2 is gonna hurt. This isn't as, like, I know it's not obviously great for her, um, but I don't know, it's two mages. Your middle tower is under attack. I don't know, like, I feel like I'd be embarrassed to lose this, but at the same time I could understand if I lose. You know? At least with no defense. He can ult my ult. He doesn't even- he has two Aegises, essentially. The more I think about this, I wanted to redo this, because I feel like it wasn't fair for him. But that's only thinking of, like, a normal matchup. He does get full build, though. 
Who's casting this? Me. I'll just cast it later, like... It'll be the true finals. Fire! No, this one's just for fun. I want, you know, to have some fun at the end. I really wanted to cast the finals and really get into it, man. I was so pumped. I was heightened and ready to fucking cast these final or the finals. But I never got to. I'm sad. I'm sad. Cast his spectre out of the back. Big Wiener Rexy runs in, hits a Kraken! Will he win? If he if he wins this engagement, chat has to give to 100 subs! Yeah, I can cast it. The place was Thaw versus Ola. That actually sounds interesting. Who was Ola? And who won? Thoth and I won. Nice. Yeah, he needs cooldown desperately. Juke. Damn, that three still killed me. I tried to use my uh, my shard to heal enough off the wave. The birds got me! And the birds hurt. That was a quick tournament, though. I'm happy- I am very, very, very happy with that tournament, other than the last- the finals, which stinks. Just like the older one. Ooh, that quick little reset there. Boom, boom. That three fucking chunks, dude. the knockback. Thank god I live there, fuck. <clears throat> oh, was I just then? Jesus. I still, I am happy with the tournament. I had a good time and I hope you guys enjoyed too. I really did enjoy myself. It felt fun casting that. I enjoy casting. One combo does so much damage! Let's think here. What were people building? I feel like a bit of attack speed wouldn't be terrible. But I don't want to overcommit on the attack speed, so let's go hasten. <laughs> Oh, 
Yeah. Well, I will be right back, my friend. I'll see you soon. Stop touching the phoenix. The, the tower. Please, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I'll take a radial strat. I'll build nothing but percentage one. I am back. What is going on? Jesus, that ability. Yeah, the jukes. Can I get a hoya? Hoya. Hey, yeah. Well, they certainly got my tower. Hoya. Hey, yeah. Wow, of all the gods I could have gotten, Poseidon is definitely one of the better ones. I think I stole Aiden's luck with these picks. Used it all up in the finals. <laughs> hey, detective. See you later. Ooh, you do hit hard. He invades this, he dies. He just, there's nothing he can do. He literally just dies. Oh, that one archer walked over there. Shit, 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 shit! Yes, 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 yes. Doesn't have any anti-heal yet. I mean... I'm not getting into it anymore, but he signed up for the tournament, knowing it was late, and it was a short tournament. It was like a three hours tournament. Like, what? Alright, well, I can fairly say that I think I got the better matchup. <laughs> I can confidently say it. But you know what? Shoutouts to Aiden for actually playing it through. Which was kind of the point of the tournament. Playing. Thank you, Frog. Appreciate the prime, dude. Sprint pop? I know, I didn't even have cooldowns. This is. Well. What's up, cheeky dogs? What's up, dude? Thank you, Rice, for the prime. Shit. Oh my god, he's got a wave. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Okay, shit. That better not be game. Don't say game. There's no way. Right? Shit. 
Without beads, that was rough. Uh oh. Uh oh. I'm gonna chill until I have beads. <laughs> Shit got me paranoid, dude. I don't like how even this suddenly is. I was kind of giggling because I thought it was over. So much. Oh fuck me. GG's. Oh the poly shot got me. I think yeah, this game. Oh, uh, if I juke that poly shot. I juked most of it, dude. It just wasn't enough. GG's well played by Aiden. <laughs> Alright. GG's boys. That was funny. That was fun. That was a good game.